Everyone. Welcome to Budapest, Hungary, the fifth stop on the ISU Junior Grand Prix. This is day one coverage. And we've already seen the men's and pairs short programs. We now prepare to close out day one with the women's short. There are 38 entries from 33 nations, and the question is, will the dominance of Japanese and Korean skaters continue, or will some newcomers emerge? Well, let's begin to find out as the women's short program begins right now. Welcome back everyone to Budapest, Hungary. Day one of competition coverage as we take a look at beautiful city. There's the parliament buildings downtown on the Danube. Spectacular, the lights, come on. Such an interesting, historic, beautiful environment as we look inside the arena here. I'm your host, Ed Barton, along with Mark Henretti. Joining me from his studio in the garage <laughs> in Nottingham. 
which is getting better all the time. As we take a look at the officials <laughs> for this event, Mark, and it's funny, we joke, but we both have been working from home, and I did one time in a, in a hotel room, able to yeah. do this, which is great, to be at home at, from time to time. Of course, have, trying to have someone on site uh, every week. Of course, we will be on site, both you and I, next week in Gdansk hey. and in Yarvin. And look at you uh, getting, as we look at the start order for the Women's Short Program, look at you all over the ice rink and the venue for these openings. You've been running around, taking shots. <laughs> well, got to got to get outside. It's uh, we're down. <laughs> we have a beautiful, really studio down here, but it's it's down here. It's like you know, in, in the basement. So just getting a little fresh air uh, is such a joy. So we did those shots outside, of course. What or two of them, anyway. So here we go. Big event, 32 ent. Is it 32? No, it's 38 entries. Yep. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have dinner yet? Um. So the the recent development, Ted, is we um, <laughs> doesn't sound good. Yeah. You know, the recent <laughs> development. <laughs> <laughs> so we had um, we, we as we have entertained with the viewers with um. My house proceedings, we had a, a renovation, and so our old dining room kitchen, I'm trying to get into this studio to make this studio look even smarter. But it's been deassembled and it's incredibly heavy. And I think I nearly broke my foot and all my toes trying to lift that top onto the legs. Um, so I've elected to uh, abandon ship and wait for the neighbor to help tomorrow before you, we. You do realize that those toes are your source of revenue <laughs> in dancing on ice. Maybe maybe not through commentating, but dancing on ice they are. <laughs> so the latter half of this year requires my toes, so I, um, I'll have to stay put with this makeshift table for now, which you're all propped on with my three screens. Um, yeah. Oh, well, it's okay. We're making it work, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh, it's interesting. I go out in front of the building and see all the skaters. I'm hunting for intel. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm a good, lot good, good, good. But I'm a lot shyer than you are. You'll go up to anybody and say, hey, how you doing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit more shy. Yeah, but next week you'll be the you'll be my... I actually think, yeah, I, I can be confident in approaching people, but um, I felt more confident when with you last year. So yeah, but that just was a, be that prepared was the first year. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, no, you're, you're all good now. <laughs> People know who you are. Season time too. We're going to get, oh, let's go tell Mark because he'll put it on air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can tell me whatever they want. I'll need to fact check, maybe. I actually, um, in light of this, as we watch this warm up group, um, I've switched on my phone to social media and I've got more intel coming from the coaches. So I'm hurriedly adding that. So Martina Petra Mayor from Hungary, her coaching staff have sent some more details in. So there's still time to share your stories and share what happens in the off-season because if we don't know it, it's, you know, we just see these gorgeous young humans looking incredible, trying their best, and it's great to have that context to see maybe why things are going particularly well or maybe not. Well, it's always good to get information so we can tell the story a little bit more accurately and with a little mm. bit more background and context is so important. We're so busy here normally, and you're just good on the social media thing. So you take care of that. I'll take care of other things and good day. Uh, make Teamwork. a good team. Indeed. What What are your thoughts then, Ted? On the so 38 women in the event. The you know now we are back to enjoying a draw for both the short program and the free skate during COVID. There was not a draw. It was just a reverse order of the short program. When it comes to the short program, how would you feel in regards to being drawn to skate in this earlier group as opposed to the latter group? Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess it has... I think the judge is very good. I, I have to say that the officials, I think, do a very good job. They recognize the qualities. The jumps are obvious. We get that. But they recognize the qualities in the skater. So I think that you skate early uh, in a junior Grand Prix at least, it doesn't really hurt. Your senior Grand Prix might be a little different because, you know, the skating is that much tighter. It's closer. But yeah. I think at juniors, it's probably okay. Um, but I, I like the reverse order too. But then for the short program, it sprinkles it up a little bit. And you have some good skaters sprinkled throughout the event. And, and uh, stories can sort of unfold from there. So I'm okay with that. I certainly like to see in the free program, 
you know, the final two groups being the final two groups, right? So, mm. no, I think it's fine. Yeah, and I think, you know, if I was thinking about, you know, we look at Haruna Murakami, the last skater in this group, and she comes into the event already with a, a silver medal, so she, you know, somebody we would expect to see finishing in the top few placements after the short program. You know, it's exciting to get to see her now, but then I also think for her, she gets the rest time now after this. She can sit back and chill out and enjoy, you know, she potentially has the longest rest point because she might find herself in the later stages for the free skate. That's true. That's true. Pros and cons. <laughs> there is. Team Italy not, not recognizing the fact that they're on the screen. Go on, Team Italia. But they're on the phone. Yes, so yes. There they go. Oh, yay, Eduardo and good, the pair teams. Uh, they need to elevate their yeah. campaign to compete with those North Americans. <laughs> Crazy North Americans. Yeah. And interesting there, Ted, seeing Katharina Berger. We've already seen her with our other student, David Sadea from Slovenia. Gosh, it must be exhausting when you've got more than one student. That emotional roller coaster for the coaches having to get back up again to support somebody else. Yes. For a coach, it's up and down emotionally with the skaters as well. And then, you know, one of your skaters does well and the other one does not do so well. And you're Ooh. constantly having to, <laughs> you know, sort of resolve. Manage. Yeah, exactly. Our first competitor comes from Slovenia, Zala Grum, 14 years old. Always difficult being the first skater out. 33.87 or personal best. You'll want to beat that here right now.
Lala Groom from Slovenia, Ljubljana she was born in and great to see her now coming back fighting. This time she elected to do the triple loop combination as opposed to the triple cycle which she fell on in her first junior Grand Prix assignment. So continuing to, to push and hunt for higher scores. Beautiful back, wonderful posture mm. and presence on the ice, amazing. There's that double ox on a big lean, didn't lift up enough, it's under rotated and took the fall. Double Lutz is no problem here. Nicely on top on the landing, mm. He's stretching the free leg as well. Love this spin, great flexibility, keeps the speed, you watch the slow motion here. And wonderful flexibility there. And that spin is in level four, so all four features with the plus GOE. There's the triple loop, hand goes down, somehow gets up into a double toe mm. loop. And Zala has some really nice qualities. You can see how straight her back is, and just needs to work on those triple jumps. The triple loop was nicely done, and I think that continue that tight, straight rotation in the air and the other jump with a little bit of momentum, and the other jumps will come along quite nicely. Yeah, you're right. That loop was like nice, nice technique. Just you know, time and development to put in the extra speed, the extra confidence. I, I want to use the word attack. That's not necessarily a word that coaches would want their skater to consider. But just pushing for, you know, more skating skills, more speed, more flow, more glide. But you can see Katarina to the left of the screen already very mindful of what's necessary. You know, it's you interesting, the word choice, you would use that word attack with some people because they would understand it more yeah. than we'd like you to be more assertive. You go, uh, what? You know, so it all depends on the state of mind or the word choice as to whether you capture the imagination of the skater. Oh, I get it. Right, so momentum obviously is important. Speed is important to take off on, carry through the air and on the landing. Some people might interpret that as attack or assertiveness, mm. aggressiveness. Uh, yeah, and then some some humans will need cajoling a little bit to push for that speed and different ways in, in which to get that out of them. It's so, so well said, Ted. Not everybody yeah. needs the same wording. No, and you know, it's a little nerve wracking. You're right about the words. It's very, very important. It's hard to describe exactly what it is for each individual person. Season's best at 36.53 for Zala Grum of Slovenia. First skater out in the short program. Well, there is our next competitor from China. 13-year-old Yi Han Wang first Junior Grand Prix event. So a new experience in a foreign land for this young skater. And she'll skate the short program to Scheherazade.
Well, Ted, this is another incredible young talent from China, Yihan Wang, 13 years old. Another, another amazing prospect for Chinese women's figure skating. And interestingly, I've just checked, she has different coaches from the other successful Chinese skaters that we've spoken about. And that excites me even more to know that there are different coaches producing great quality. Well, we've been watching the Chinese team and juniors really take to the ice and show some wonderful quality, nice double axe with some moves into a twizzle. Here's the triple flip. So easy up into the double toe loop. And watch this triple lutz. Soft knees on the way up and on the way down. Just riding that edge, wonderful quality. Yeah, really impressive and Look just at the, wondering now. The depth oh, of this is great, here, good yeah. pass. We saw Richen Tong from China placed in the top five in Osaka in Japan. And I know there were some events in China, as you see that really good speed, maintaining the center and that difficult exit for the Beelman. There were domestic events in China which dictated some of the Junior Grand Prix entries, but I didn't see Yi Han Wang. I'm not sure where she finished in the mix of that. But I think she could now post a score that will be the highest of all those Chinese women on the Junior Grand Prix so far. So they've maybe saved their best for later. Who knows? And I loved her smile when she took the ice. She just had this, oh, I'm here. You know, this yeah. excitement, if you will. And she was really charming and beautiful. Well. She doesn't have a season's or a personal best, but this will be it, that's for sure. As we see, 60.43 points come onto the board. And that'll put Yihan Wang, second skater out, but clearly into first. That should hold up for quite a way through the competition, we'll see. What a great start. There's our next competitor representing Italy, 16-year-old Anna Pazetta. Second gen Junior Grand Prix season, third and senior at the Italian Senior Nationals. 27th for the Junior World Championships last year. 60.05 personal best. I mean that last season. She'll skate short program to fly an experience by Ian Audi.
Italy's Anna Pizzetta. And I think, Ted, Anna has, maybe unbeknown to her, had respect from skating fans, as the Italian team cheer on, from skating fans and skaters around the world who recognise she has probably, possibly, probably, possibly the biggest jumps on the women's circuit in both junior and senior. And it was great to see her deliver them cleanly, and, both in the combo and the race. And there it is. The talent that we always knew was there was on full display here. It was always a little elusive for her. Look at the speed and aggressiveness. We'll use that word in her case throughout, yeah. the, throughout this program. Watch the speed on this double axle. Legs and arms lifted up into there. Huge Whoa. speed on the landing as well. Just remarkable. Here's the triple Lutz. Big air. Solid landing. Just at the end here of her step sequence. But she was in a zone. Like, I think that she would always get so excited to use her power, she overused it. But it was in control here tonight. Her power was well organized and well controlled and well delivered. Yeah, and it was interesting before she went out, she's now with her coach, Elisa Mikonsari, in the Kiss and Cry. Before she went out, they looked you know, quite intense before she went out, and I thought, well, I wonder if she's nervous because she seems to be somebody who hasn't lived up to the potential. So I was a bit nervous, but the, no need to be nervous. She looked totally in command, and obviously any change in training location that she's been forced to endure in the summer has really paid off because that was, like you say, aggressive, confident. Well, she looked focused like she wanted to mm. prove she's had the ability everybody told her that but when you keep on hearing you're so good you're so good you're so good but you can't deliver you wonder why so yeah. she looks like she's just mad she proved to herself and to others she could deliver at least here in the short program that was done and we'll see a 61.12 and even Anna <laughs> is going whoa that's a huge <laughs> score well Anna that just goes to show you what we've all known you have it mm. in your own control you have it in your ability Brilliant. Nicely done. A little fuss, small little fist pump on that one. <laughs> Our next competitor represents Sweden, 16-year-old Nina Fredriksson. First junior Grand Prix season, but second event this fall, coming 19th in Linz. National Swedish junior champion, 32nd at World Juniors last year. A 42.44 personal best, 41.76 seasons best. I'd like to top that score right now. Skating to music from Secret Garden, Nocturne, and Beating Heart.
16-year-old Nina Fredriksson from Sweden competing in her second and final event on the Junior Grand Prix Series. And Ted, I saw when she was in Linz, I thought huge potential. This a little bit more reflective of it. She had attempted triple-triple in her first assignment, but then popped this loose into a single, whereas here managed to rotate three rotations on that second jumping pass. Yeah, a little bit better than out at Linz, and this is a perfect example of a skater getting some confidence and good patience to get that free leg back in time to get the double toe loop done. Didn't give in to that. There's the triple yeah. nuts. Hand has to go down, but still turn the jump. And the, the double rotation. axle. Yeah, absolutely. The double axle, nice all the way around. And here's a look at some of the steps, the slides at yeah. the end of the program. Uh, and I suppose you know, great to see Nina coming here, improving upon what happened in Linz, but great to see that back-to-back -back example with Anna. Nina's done a great job, really pleased for her, and then hopefully having trained this morning and the practice size with Anna, she'll have seen the impact of those grades of execution. So same jump content as the Italian who's gone before her, just now the, the question is when you skate cleanly, how much can I push those GOEs? Yeah, it's... Such an important question that is not often answered by junior skaters themselves. They have to be brought to that realization and that is time consuming and patience of the coach is to convince them that these steps and quality of skating bring you points. And we have to improve that. But you know, for them, the main focus is skate clean on the jumps at this, at this stage. Yeah, and I think, I think that might be Irina Mayorov with her. So I think possibly a new coaching staff. So new developments, new changes, and it looks like this could be, certainly from an ISU standpoint, a new personal best for Nina, and deservedly so. Yeah, she should be happy with that. Certainly will feel that she can skate clean. With that mm. hand down to the Lutz, that Lutz was well constructed, just mm. too far forward, so add a couple points with a clean Lutz. A triple-triple combination would be good, and as we see, Season's best of 45.53, and that'll put Nina currently into third place. Certainly has the ability to have that score on 50 or above. I'm sure that'll come in time this year. Next. Our next competitor represents Japan, 15-year-old Haruna Murakami. First Junior Grand Prix season as a single skater, won the World Juniors in pairs with partner Sumitara Moriguchi, was second in Linz, week number two on the Junior Grand Prix, 62.66. She'll skate to Dance Monkey by Tones and I.
Japan's Haruna Murakami fights for a possible spot at the Junior Grand Prix Final. If she can add some more silverware to follow up on the silver medal that she achieved at the Cup of Austria in Linz. And it's an amazing story, Ted. She was born in Australia. At four, she went to see Disney Nice. Started skating at five. By six, the coach said she'd be competitive. And by eight, the mother relocated her back to her homeland of Japan to be taught by Hamada. And here she is now. Well, there you go. A little touchdown on that Lammy. And what she brings to the ice is a maturity and a sassiness, if you will, of performance, <laughs> which the others don't really have yet. And juniors, she brings a sort of a senior quality to this as well. Here's the triple sow, reloads down on the knee, triple total, beautifully done. Mm. First triple triple of the event. But interesting, Ted, I don't think this maybe sung and sparkled quite as effervescently as her first assignment so it'll be interesting Agreed. how the components compare i thought that when i watch her skate i love the choreographer and i love her presentation but she didn't seem mm. just quite as joyful in this as she yeah. did in the first one but we take a look at a change combination spin level four highest degree of difficulty with a 0 0.70 for the quality those 0 0.70 added to the base score Yeah, just looking at the components, it looks like she's maybe half a point down on the skating skills, the presentation, and the composition. So maybe the judge is sensing just not that same level of commitment, but her baseline of quality is so good that she's still going to be in the sixes out of ten for those most of those components, all of those components. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's just 15 years old, but she skates older. Yeah. Well, 57.51 for Haruna Murakami of Japan. That'll put her currently into third place. She's got a wonderful smile. Yeah. Point. Top three skaters. So good. Mm. And group number two takes to the ice for their six minute warm up. See the Hungarian skater Cynthia Zabo, first skater in this group. Mm. Trains in this very arena. All right, this is probably one of their main training facilities. I don't know. I haven't asked the question if there are other ones, or but this is set up. Uh, Alexander Loshenko was telling me that this is where they do their, most of training in this big arena, not in the freezing cold one. They have a little bit of time <laughs> in that one, but. They're usually in this big arena, so that's nice. They have a really nice gym at the end of the rink as well. So they're all set up in a, we are actually, our production studio is in the ballet room. So and oh, as a matter of nice. fact, right now I'm leaning against the ballet bar because I'm getting tired. Ah. No, no. Oh, you, I, thought, I was ready for you to say you're doing your plies and your no, no. and No, and no, <laughs> I'm not leaning against the bar. I'm leaning against the ballet bar, right? Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> No, it's a really nice room, a really nice facility here. So, got a great training location, creating a good environment. But it would be interesting to know a little bit more about the Federation and how many members they have. I'll try to do a little intel there over the next couple of days. Interesting, they, I understand there's a school, the Pavuk School. So, the first skater out who we see now, Cynthia. She's taught by Patricia Pavuk, and they train here along with her other coach, Andras Sternoch. But interesting, I, I remember um, Pavuk, uh, Victoria Pavuk, who I think was fourth at European Championships, another skater. So we see again that, that lineage, that, that she, all the education amassed by each skater. It's then held in their brains and in their bodies and then filtered on through, and now Cynthia is the next generation for sure. Well, there are certainly many of these coaches have become addicted to the sport, uh, whether they were a skater or whether they're a coach. It's it's in their blood, and they love doing it. And uh, thank gosh that, that it happens that way now. As we talked mm. about in one of our podcasts, difficult to make your living on this. You have to really set yourself up and you know be very conscious of saving and whatnot because you're not working for anyone except for independent skaters and families yeah and 
even just thinking of the, the last skater, Haruna Murakami, her coach Mia Hamada, her, her main coach, she obviously has many influences, many wonderful influences, influences from the Kanoshita Academy, but her main coach, she was in Osaka, she, we've seen her on the circuit, she'll now be here with another coach, and now we've got Neville Horn Trophy, a prestigious event, often used as the Olympic qualifying event, happening this week for the seniors on the Challenger circuit, so coaches having to divide their time between their students at different internationals, but not necessarily back in the training rink earning money to pay for their own bills. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a uh, it's a tough business, no question. So, Mark, did we have any questions come in? No. Uh, no, I know. Come on, guys, D just give us. We should actually we should pose maybe specifics. We should pose <laughs> specific questions so that might entice people to be a little more inclined to. Um, given answers. I do have intel though, Ted. In the absence of questions, okay. I have some intel. Um, I've just been checking my notes and communication with the public skating school and they explained that um, in the sports club here, there are 30 figure skaters, uh -huh. two of them competing in this event, and Cynthia, who's in this warm-up group, joined the club three years ago. Martina, the next Hungarian skater, Joint, has been a part of this club from her first steps on the ice. And they're taking the French team, the pairs that have just finished, and the dancers as well. It's good to see them here to support Stefania Gladki, who will be last to skate in the group. Yeah, good uh, good intel there, Mark. Keep it going, that social media <laughs> stuff and communications uh, becomes very handy. And well, I suppose it gives us you know, I talked about, you know, it's great that the skaters are skating and not on their phones all the time, but it, <laughs> the social media gives us an insight into, you know, so many young people document their life through their social media channels. So what I found really amazing, Ted, is seeing if I go to get some information on the skaters who are here, seeing how many of them, they get the chance to have their little biography and their description of self. And skating is their description of self. A lot of them feel so very defined by their sport and their commitment to their sport. So then that makes me all the more sort of protective over them because knowing that this is how they define and describe themselves as people because of their commitment to their sport, well then we're here to back you, come good or bad, we respect you're putting your life out for us to enjoy. Yeah, no question, doesn't matter. We'd love to see you have a great day and have fun, but we will be there to support you in the bad days because that's just part of the journey. Can't get away from it, everybody's going to have it. It's nice to have the background, especially the stories with, you know, skaters like, as I mentioned this morning, uh, with uh, Adam Hagara told me he oh, broke yeah. his blades, right? He broke his blades last week, so he had new blades he had to put on. Little things like that, here he is, he's in first place after the short program. Just little items like that help you understand some of the trials and tribulations that these athletes go through, you know, before and after each competition. And I think that the, um, we fall in love with the humans. We love our sport, but we connect and fall in love with the humans. So like I think of in tennis, there's Novak Djokovic, or there's, there was Roger Federer, there was the Williams sisters. We fall kind of with the people. What's great is hopefully now we can connect more and more with these people and these humans and involve our, you know, get involved in their development all the way up to the Olympic Games. Well, that's <laughs> a big part of streaming that we want our future champions, and they are future champions, to be known as young skaters, young people, and get people engaged and follow their careers through. That's one of the initiatives of this streaming, anyways. As we get started in group number two, first skater represents Hungary, trains right here in this facility. 18 year old Cynthia Zabo from Hungary, first junior Grand Prix season. First event. And she'll skate the short program in front of family and friends to welcome to Burlesque and hit the road jack.
Well, the first of two Hungarian women competing in the women's short program, 18-year-old Cynthia Zabo, and she finished third at the Hungarian test gate in August, and she has said it was her absolute dream to perform in front of a home crowd in her first Junior Grand Prix season, and congratulations to her. Yes, yeah, interesting. Certainly, you know, 18 years old, more mature skater without question than some of the other competitors in this event. And probably signed to come of the what we'll see in the Junior Grand Prix as the age increases as the entry into seniors. This was just a slip off that edge and with the takeoff of the double axle. Triple Salakau lifts up a little loose in the air. I want to be much tighter with the feet. Faster rotation. We'll get that check out. And obviously not the technical difficulty that we have seen or no. will continue to see, but there are aspects in the step sequence where, you know, we talked about the, the sass of Murakami, and there was definitely some glimmers of sass from Cynthia Zabo as well. Yeah, it's such a wide range of ages in the juniors. Not, not many, most are 15, 13 to 15 years old, some 16, 17. You know, and Cynthia may, you know, struggle to achieve the minimum technical amount scores you might consider for the senior ranks. That'll be her big push is to amass more triple jump content and training. But she can now say she represented Hungary in a Hungarian Junior Grand Prix at an ISU event. So different skaters have different trajectories. We wish Cynthia all the best. But right now, she can sit in that kiss and cry so proudly wearing that Hungarian jacket. Yeah, absolutely. Short program score. For Cynthia Zabo from Hungary, 33.58. That is sixth in the short program so far in the event. And there is our next skater representing Belgium, 17-year-old Julia Castorini, national junior champion. First Junior Grand Prix event. Let's get the short program to a tonal.
Fantastic stretch and speed in the final change for combination spin for Belgium's Julia Castorini and Ted in my research of the athletes, uh, just sort of insight into Julia's life and saying exams are over and it gives us that context. Julia is working triple jumps on an ice rink and also dealing with the real life stuff of school exams as well. So, so much on her plate. No question. You see the opening jump coming, triple toe, double toe. Good start. Double axe, this is a bit more problematic. Watch the fall here. Kind of a hard fall. Oof. Just a bit of a shocker. But gets back up with the program and a little loose in the air on that double lutz, but gets it done. Chopping three turns into the last spin, the change combination spin. All four features. There's a forward outside edge, that's a feature change. With the sit spin. We'll jump over the other foot. Leg lift, level four. So two out of the seven elements in the minus GOEs. The rest it in the pluses, just barely perhaps. And Julia's music, Ottenal by Rul de Blasio. It's funny how you can associate. So for me, Maria Butruskaya, the woman that won the World Championships in 99, skated to this music for a couple of seasons. And there's the instant connection for me with the music and a skater. But I think a great choice for Julia. You know, a, a very, we've spoken about the classical music choice and I think a good vehicle for her. Yeah, I know, I agree. You know, sometimes simple is better. I mean, classical music gives you a little bit more I shouldn't say it's more simple, but you're not dealing with the story or emotions of a voice or whatever while you're trying to do all the difficult elements. Mm. But to each his own, everyone finds yes. the right level for themselves. And that's, you know, such a hard challenge. So for Julia, she's chosen the Ottenal for the short program. She's got Rachmaninoff for her uh, free skate. So. For her and her coach and her choreographer, they've obviously gone down a classical route, finding that as the optimal choice for Julia to get those good composition and presentation scores. So, each, as you say, Ted, each to the own. Yeah, that's vehicle for her. Boy, it's sparkly dress, eh? It's like, wow, that's a lot of. Yeah. <laughs> See, it just lighten up. <laughs> yeah, good point. The lights are Great. really catching that. <laughs> Short program score, 38.44 for Julia. That'll put her currently in the fifth place. There is a look at your top five skaters so far in this event. And there is our next competitor representing Greece, 18-year-old Despoina Katsuru. 29th at the European Youth Olympics in 2022. First Junior Grand Prix season. She takes her starting position to skate to You Say by Lauren Daigle.
Another 18 year old in this group, Despoina Kataru from Greece. She studies architecture. She trains at the Avantis Ice Sports Club, born in Athens, and here representing Greece in the Junior Grand Prix. That's fantastic. The studying architecture and doing this sport as an activity, physical activity, and a passion, and getting to skate here. And it really doesn't matter. Just the experience is what's going to bring her some joy here. You know, going for the double left, but pops it into a single. That's okay. The axle two comes into a single. Maybe just not comfortable or confident enough at this point. Into back camel here. Change cam or camel spin level two. So got in two features. There's the upside down, then the reverse catch. Double flip a little bit later in the program, gets that done into a single toe loop. Just at that stage of development, and you can tell this young woman doesn't have as much time in her life probably with going to school for <laughs> architecture just to spend enough time on the ice to you know, improve those skills, but still loves to skate. And that's what's so wonderful about the sport and about the Junior Grand Prix, it allows you to do that. Yeah. And We've talked about music choice with the previous skater for Despoina. She's picked this, the track You Stay by Lauren Daigle, and you know, you can sense that's something, something that she resonates with and connects with. So, yeah, emotional output for her. Well, 21.09, that'll put her currently in the eighth place. Well, there is little 13-year-old Pampita Nupreyewan from Thailand. Wow. And we've seen a number of the Thai skaters, of course, being in Bangkok and witnessing that program there. So skate to Dark Minuet.
gorgeous finish position from Pita Lerprawan from Thailand. And I feel, Ted, we've all connected and a little invested with the Thai skaters after their first Junior Grand Prix event in Bangkok. And great to see another young, talented skater here. Yeah, really nice work by Pampita. And you can see some beautiful qualities. Very patient. Mm -hmm. Here's the double Lutz. Nice landing position. And really appreciated her double axle. We'll see here. Lay. The layback spin. Nice speed at the top. Side position. Now she turns back, goes backwards, grabs the blade. This layback is in level three, so just missing one feature to get to level four. But beautifully done. There's the Beelman. Beautiful. Here's the double axle. Watch her take. She looked back at her right hand to check herself straight up off the end of the edge. Under rotated in the double axle, but the mechanics were extremely well done. This young woman has been taught very, very well and is very patient and precise with her movements. Yeah, and I, you know, like I said, because we've seen that center of excellence in Bangkok where she trains and so we do feel somewhat invested. We've seen other competitors from her nation as we look through the counter and the forward inside twizzle. So I'm sure Pumpita will have seen that. Obviously she will have watched that too, if not live, but then throughout the CD she'll have watched her others. She and her coach know what's necessary. They'll know that she needs triple jumps. Just great to see then her delivering what she can and having a Beelman position that was as competitive as anybody while she amasses the other technical content in due course. Well, just 13 years old, if she continues this pathway, because she's got wonderful basic qualities, it'll be very interesting to see where she's at next season and the season after that. Mm. You can see she's a student of the sport, thinking all the time. 34.53, <laughs> that is seventh for Pampita from Thailand in the short program so far in the event. Well, another 13-year-old from France, Stefania Gladke, first Junior Grand Prix season, second event, coming fourth just off the podium in Linz. 59.32, her personal best. Really a beautiful skater. And very determined. She'll skate to Undyne by Maurice by Rival.
13 year old Stefania Gladke and she had to work hard to do the program but this young woman is so mature of mind and thought in her approach she's skating to this music image of Undine the Mermaid and there's a whole story behind the concept it's about a refined, fragile and a little lonely mermaid and I had to go and research the concept and that just gives you, you know, as we see the double axle this is a a 13 year old who is going to such degrees of consideration in her composition. Yeah, absolutely. It really understands the quality and the importance of every single move. Mm. There's the triple flip, that's a little bit forward, pushes up yeah. as high as she can get around that triple total, but does under rotate that. There's the flying system. Watch the turnout toe right here. Very nice position, good speed, nicely centered, one spot from a technical perspective. But as you mentioned, it's the program components all in the mid sixes, which really mm. helped this young woman. She has a sensitivity to the music and the choreography that maybe is a little bit beyond her years. Yeah. Triple lots a little bit later. Well done. And seeing actually the scores coming in, there's quite a, a disparity between the composition and the skating skills. That's good to see the judges recognize we sh Stefania has told us this story of the mermaid, the choreography by Vera Arotunian, but the judges can recognize the thought behind that and that's why she's got a higher composition score than the skating skills, which were also very good. Yeah, it's a really full package skater, there's no question of that. And just 13 years of age, we'll see much more from mm. her as she continues to develop and grow and mature. But the basics, all the basics are right there, even the jumping technique it's all there it's just a matter of you know you can say all that but it's a matter of the thousands of hours that are required as you grow to keep things together and to increase the difficulty but at this stage at the age of 13 it's quite magnificent hmm. well 59.32 is her personal best and she would be happy to get that here. She would need a 61.13 to take the lead. The costly will the rotation be on the triple toe. Yeah, 58.52. And that puts Stefania currently into third place. But she'll know exactly what those, what cost her in that. That's the good mm. thing about the yeah. system. She'll look into that and say, yeah, that's, I got to get that clean because that cost me. Yeah. Beautiful skate. As we take a look at the standing so far after the first two groups. And there are five more to come. <laughs> so, <there's laughs> lots of skating. Lots can happen. There is a look at the standing so far. Anna Pizzetta of Italy, what a great skate she had. And mm. Yihan Wang of China had a great skate as well. So we go to the ice resurfacing, and what's next on our our ISU Netflix video playback? <laughs> <list>? <laughs> well, this little resurface section is going to be the winner section from the previous Junior Grand Prix. We'll get treated to the interviews from the women that have won already. Amina Kai, the interview after her first win in Bangkok. Then to Jia Shin, who we will see compete later for after her win in Linz. And then to Mao Shimada, the Junior World Champion who won her first Junior Grand Prix assignment last week in Osaka. Perfect. We'll take a short break. We'll be back right after this. Here in Bangkok with the champion, the women's champion in the week one of the Junior Grand Prix. I mean, Nakai from Japan, of course. Coach Nakata as well, along with her. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, Ami how she felt about her performance overall today. I was watching the practices all day today and she had difficulty with the triple axle during the practice, but it didn't bother her the rest of the way throughout, throughout the program. How did she get over that first disappointment in the, in, in the triple axle? Well, 
I mean, you're such a beautiful skater and you have a really bright future. And it was amazing to keep your focus throughout that program. Uh, what are you going to work on between now and the next Junior Grand Prix? Well, you're a wonderful skater. Uh, so much enjoyment you bring to the fans, and we love watching you skate. Congratulations uh, on your win here. And what competition do you, will you be going to now? So we'll see you in Istanbul. The champion here in Bangkok, I mean, Nakai of Japan, takes the title. Here in Linz, Austria, with the women's champion, Jia Shin of Korea, who won the event by over 30 points. Just an incredible skate. Congratulations. And I wanted to ask you how you felt about your performance today. We love watching her skate. I mean, she's so beautiful. It's just amazing how how efficient and how beautiful her skating is and how consistent it is. But I want to ask her, what is it that she loves about figure skating? Certainly look like you enjoyed in performance and we love watching you skate. You're absolutely spectacular. Congratulations on the win here at Linz. Does she know where she's going to the next competition? Well, we were looking forward to watching you skate once again in Budapest. Congratulations on such a beautiful performance. Jia Shen, the champion here in Linz. たくさんの応援をいただけて緊張したんですけど、その応援していただいたおかげで楽しく滑ることができました。やっぱり世界ジュニア選手権優勝して、グランプリシリーズも優勝したので、やはり今シーズンも絶対入賞したいって思いはあ
Welcome back everyone to Budapest, Hungary. Day one of competition, final event of the day, women's short program. Group number three takes the ice right now for the warm-up. I'm your host, Ed Barton, along with Mark Henry joining me from Nottingham in his garage studio. Mark, you there? Yes, I've just been uh, painting the internal door as we have the resurface. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's good. So you, so, whoa, almost a good um, right. So, Mark, seeing as no one is asking this question, <laughs> which is a little bit disappointing, but I'm yes. going to ask you a question, okay? I'll put you on the okay. spot here. Oh, dear. So, mm -hmm. your coach, and I've had this yep. happen to me as well before. So, if parents come and say, okay, look, I need to know whether my child has talent uh, because it's expensive sport, 
uh, and I mm. need to know that it's a good investment. What do I do? What are the answers when you see some, certainly some abilities, but you, talent doesn't guarantee you anything, and, and, and ones that struggle don't, they may have a bigger heart and overcome some of their struggles mm. they have at the beginning. So, I mean, what do you say? So, at that point now, and maybe it's the place that I'm in, and I feel as honest as is possible. So I think I would articulate what I think that the the young skater has in terms of a physical ability and the mental approach, because I think fairly early on you can get a bit of an assessment about the kind of human that you're dealing with, and then that's confirmed sometimes by being in the company of their parents or guardians, because you get an insight into the kind of mentality of the household. I'd say what that could potentially offer them in terms of either competitive pursuits or other skating pursuits. And I think what I, I to me, honesty is the best policy. And so, in my situation, I would be mindful of the fact that where I train, it's not necessarily conducive to world-class insofar as there aren't many world-class athletes in that environment. So I'd say, yes, yay or nay, your child has the ability to potentially be a world-class skater and consequently you'll be able to see your child potentially representing your nation at international competitions around the globe. And that would have all of these ramifications. But I'd suggest that, you know, as honest as possible about what it would take to be that. I'm very fortunate insofar as I have competed at Worlds and Europeans, and whilst I wasn't, you know, anywhere near the top, I've got an insight into what it takes, and I can at least give that option as well, because I think as gorgeous as skating is, and as intoxicatingly exciting as competition is, there are many challenges on that path as well, and I think it's great to be able to say to the parents, this is my perspective of what it would take in this nation if you want to pursue that path. Okay, that's actually a very good answer, and I like it because I'm going to ask you more questions because you take up time, so... It's <laughs> <laughs> Could it talk feels, forever. It fills the space. No, no, but that was, that was well said. You know, it's interesting, as honest as possible because the problem always is, is honest as with the experience that we have, the knowledge that we know that, that we've got with us through our lengthy, in my case, um, journey through the sport. There's never any guarantees that although you have patterns to follow through the years and years of coaching and being involved in the sport, there's never guarantees. I've seen some skaters completely shock me because their heart was bigger than anything, it was more powerful yeah. than any other part of their body. Their heart just was in it and they wanted to do it and they overcame so many obstacles. Then others that look just naturally skilled and talented, you go, wow, but you don't know how badly they do or don't want to do it because it could be driven by outside factors, whether yeah. it's family or whatever the case may be. So it's very difficult. I agree with you being as honest as possible with what you see at the moment, but say I can't measure the heart. I don't know how big that heart is. So if there are challenges along the way, the heart may very well overcome those obstacles. But we'll see. Difficult. And it, it is challenging. And one of the other factors that is pertinent, dependent on what skating nation the skaters represent, is the cost and the expense of the support of the sport. And so I would have to acknowledge that there could be big sacrifices that need to be made to pursue representing your nation, you know, your country at this kind of event. But what I'd also be able to say is that, you know, I struggle to pay my way for my competitions around the world. And I was, I don't know if you know the word skint, like perpetually skint, like, like skint, never had any money because it was all you know, oh. going into my skating. Okay. But I was happy in the pursuit of a goal. And I think I maybe mentioned this in one of the other broadcasts. I recently saw in the supermarket recently a parent of one of the skaters that I taught and she was a British champion and we went to a couple of inter we went to an international competition and the child was talented and eventually she decided to stop the sport. And I remember at that time the, the family really struggled financially, which is understandable, many do. But the mum so missed it and I thought for all that they you know, struggled and, and worried about the financial implications at the time for paying for it, the joy that it also brought at the same time is something she's so missed. So you can't really put a value yeah, on true. what that can do for the skater or the that, parent. That, that's true. You just can't put a value on it. The only thing in the skating is that you are also learning a profession. You could certainly teach skating whether you want to do that part-time, which is a great part-time job. Um, but, yeah, it's really hard to put into common sense the dollars spent dollars earned um, and the mm. value that you gain in life 
think the participation of this extremely difficult sport. It all looks beautiful and pretty and all that kind of stuff like that, but it's so difficult. And it's a challenge every day for these skaters. And I suppose that's what I'd love to, to campaign for, is to help make skating regain a popularity that gives more and more job opportunities. So like in the 90s, post Tonya and Nancy, there were so many job opportunities. It'd be great if we can see more and more of those fostered, but not from somebody whacking somebody's kneecap. Perfect. No, yeah, that's true. <laughs> My next question for you, no, I have another question for you, but we may need two warm-ups for that. <laughs> <laughs> Our first skater in group number three represents Latvia, 18-year-old Anastasia Konga, second Junior Grand Prix season, coming 15th in Linz, week number two on the Junior Grand Prix. 50.36 personal bests, season's best of 46.33. Wanting to up that here. Anastasia Konga, the 18-year-old, born in Riga in Latvia, and she's been so busy, Ted. She competed at the Yagava Cup just a few days ago on the 16th and 17th of the month, and she was so happy to achieve the tech minimum score for Senior World in the free skate at that event, because this is a skater that is doubling up in junior and senior. A oh, beautiful triple lutz, nice and clean, gets the free leg back a little slow, but beautifully done. It's a pretty good program for her. Cautious coming to the triple flip. He didn't get a great lift on it, gets up into the double toe, gets the combination done. Some nice turns coming up into the double axle. And that was all good. Here's just some of the moves in the step sequence. Thought she used her knees and her arms really well. Very 
and although <laughs> it was connected through some of the groove, but not necessarily emotionally through the face. Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. And and maybe that will be as we see that difficult. Oh, well done, Ted. Nicely caught. Thank you. It's great difficult exit, the feature on the spin. And now, knowing that Anastasia is competing on the Challenger Series, she says that she will do more of the Challenger Series events in the senior ranks following her competition in Budapest. Then she'll be exposed to more of the season campaigners from Senior Worlds, and then maybe that she'll tap into more of that emotion to push the presentation component. Because at the moment, it's the presentation component which is lowest for yes. Anastasia. Yeah, exactly. She's got some nice solid jump technique, no problem there. Mm. It's a nice move for choreography, but at some point, what are those extra intangibles that they're difficult to explain to a young person? Well, what does it mean getting connected to music? What does it mean emotional? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? You have to learn it and be taught it and have a little bit of, in your soul. 45.95 for Anastasia, and that puts her currently in a different place. Look at your top five skaters so far in the event. Our next competitor represents Norway, 17-year-old Mia Riza Gomez, second Junior Grand Prix season, Norwegian National Senior Champion, 22nd at European, 35th at Senior Worlds last year. Certainly has lots of experience, 50.72 personal best last season on the Junior Grand Prix, skating to metamorphosis at Philip Glass. Norway's Mia Riza Gomez, born in Mexico City. She moved with her family from Mexico to Norway when she was two. Now, here representing Norway. And there's another skater to head that's competed as junior and senior already this season. She did the Lombardia Trophy. And just an example of not quite in the moment or just hazy on the landing of that triple toe. But you know, some skaters, 
we see here do the nice triple toe loop there, but a little bit too far yeah. forward. Or it can be have beautiful steps, but only have a level two or a level one. Mm. And I thought that was the case here in this step sequence. Mm. Some wonderful movement, but didn't meet all the criteria required. Level two in the step sequence here. So look at, well, this is the setup of the double axle here, actually. Great speed off the end of the edge. Solid on the landing. Stretch free leg. Bower there. Kept moving throughout the program. Kept the upper body. Turns in different directions. We see a twizzle here, a long one. Mm -hmm. it's a nice turn. Just there, the uh, yeah, the rocker counter. Maybe it's that feature she missed there, the cluster of turns. A, a beautiful skater, just missing some of the technical details needed to get that top score. Mm. And. Interesting, the choice of music. She lists playing the piano as one of her hobbies, and that music is so perfect for the skaters. Elegant, refined in her style, and just she will probably relive the landing of that triple toe all night, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> she had that 46.5 at the Senior Challenger Series event in Bergamo just a few weeks ago, and I think it's going to be a similar, different mistakes perhaps, but similar kind of score for Mirza. But, you know, so very capable of, you know, pushing way past the 50.72 that is her personal best, I imagine, just making it all happen within the context of a near three minute performance. Yeah, I think this skater can definitely do that and well past that. 50 mark, mm. 50 point mark. But she needs to put it all together at one time, obviously. She's got some beautiful movements. Lost a couple points on some of the levels. 45.17 for Mia Riza Gomez from Norway. Gotta put it currently in the seventh place. And a Pizzetta of Italy still holding down first place yeah. at this stage of the competition. What a great program that was for her. We take a look at our next competitor from Slovakia, Vanessa Selmakova. 16 years old, second Junior Grand Prix season, second event this fall. Coming 22nd in Linz, week number two. 48.59 personal best, 39.78 season's best. Looking to top that right now, skating to Golden Hour.
the 16 year old Vanessa Selmakova representing Slovakia and she's picked this somewhat iconic piece of music over the last year or so, so popular with so many and brave of her to take it, to move beautifully in part of it. And this is an example, Ted, of a skater where rotation on the jumps is so crucial. I saw, I knew that her result in Linz was so dependent upon rotation and I saw clean rotation on the jumps and warm up, but here, yeah, a little under rotated, definitely on the triple flip. Here's the triple lutz. We'll take a look at that right here. Watch the landing. Oh yeah, that's forward. So that's a downgrade plus the fall. Those are the types of mistakes that really take a nice skater down in the standings mm. with the scores. Double axle. That was fine. Nice stretch on the free leg there on the landing. So you can see beautiful qualities. And here's some of the mm. steps as well. Soft knees and good deep edges. We used the word attack earlier and mm. I debated it. Gorgeous movement, well done again, Ted. Love that, it's beautiful movement there. And having seen the triple loops in warm-up, I remember seeing Vanessa perform the triple loops in warm-up and thinking, oh good, that was, that was clean, that was solid because at her previous event in Linz, I remember thinking she's gonna be crushed at her result because she's gonna come in thinking I've got triple loops and triple flip, and then the rotation calls meant the score was so much lower than she may have anticipated or been capable of. Something happens in performance which makes skaters just tighten up a little bit, not commit to the depth of knee, and pop off the ice to guarantee the same rotation, which I saw the skater achieve just half an hour or so ago in warm-up. I think you have to always attack under control, and that's yeah. a fine balance. So which one? Do I control it or do I attack it? Well, you actually do both. And I think you yeah. need that because you need that momentum to carry you through and you see some of those Japanese Korean skaters lift up off the air, fly through the air going really fast. They're all the way around, not an issue. You need to learn that. Not easy. Season's best yeah. at 41.09. And that'll put Vanessa currently in eighth place. So season's best, but still not happy with what she thinks she can do. And I know she can do more but you're gonna to need to not under-rotate those jumps for sure. Our next competitor represents Austria, 14-year-old Hannah Frank, second Junior Grand Prix season, Austria's junior national champion, 30th at World Junior last season, 46.18 personal best, but 43.01 season's best, wanting to beat that here right now. Skating the crazy train, doubles dance and Palladio.
Austria's Hanna Frank, which is the 14 year old, and this is skater who's had the celebration of having a home Junior Grand Prix, and she said she loved the home crowd in Linz. And when I asked her about thoughts towards this event, she said simply, looking forward to the short program and hopes that people enjoy my skating. And I love her open posture. I really, really enjoy Hannah skating. Yeah, me too. And I love her uh, smile of joy during the program. Mm. That's a little under rotated, too far back on the heel. But she kept her smile of joy all the way through because she loves doing this. Look at that knee bit on the triple toe again on the second one. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. Here's the double axle, takes her time and lifts way off the end of the edge. Nice and done, all the way. Look at that smile, all the way through this. Mm. And I think it's not because, oh, I've got her smile here. I think it's just part of who she is in her program. Maybe yeah, that's... and you know, when I asked that, Ted, you know, what, do you, what are you hoping for? I want to enjoy it. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope that people enjoy my skating. So that's, and that's coming from, you know, such a, a pure place. Well, it's so nice that you just said that, that you love watching her skate, as do I, because mm. she that's what she wants us to do, and that's what we do. Mm. I enjoy, look at that, just, you know, that's just charming. You know, you hope they skate clean because you want them to be happy, but sometimes, mm. even with programs that have mistakes, they can still bring the audience a lot of joy. And she's so clean and like nice clean rotational position, like I said, the lovely open posture, leg lines are always clean, very well trained, well packaged. And although the loose fall, in Lynch she doubled it, whether that was intentional or not, I don't know. She had a single axle in Lynch, so improvements, looking for a PB. And there she has it, season's best, 50.84. And that will put Hannah Frank of Austria currently into fifth place. And then she starts wondering, okay, without any mistakes, <laughs> yeah. how much better can it be? Well, you're on your way in a nice program. A charming smile. There is our next competitor, represents the Republic of Korea, 14-year-old Yoo Sung Kim. First Junior Grand Prix season, second event, taking the silver in week one in Bangkok. The 63.04, that would be a top score here today if she can match that. She'll skate right now to fly me to the moon.
the silver medal from the first Junior Grand Prix of the series in Bangkok, Yu Song Kim from Korea. And what's interesting, Ted, is when you get this level of quality with level fours and almost all the elements, you become almost more picky. I find myself being more picky for Yu Song Kim because she's so, so good than perhaps some of the others who don't have the same level of difficulty in it. Yeah, as we see the double axle, a little bent in the air, but still well done with a nice three turn at the end on the landing edge and triple flip. No problem. Well, a little bit of a problem landing four, but she resets herself, gets up all the way around the triple toe loop. And then the triple lutz. Could be tidier in the air, certainly more efficient, but still beautiful performance. Her PC scores are up the mid to high sixes. And without mistake, you do not rare you do rarely see a mistake coming from a Korean skater or a Japanese skater. You do see them for sure. I'm not saying they're perfect, that's for sure, but rarely because they are so well trained and they have to fight so hard to get out of the country. And that makes all the difference when you're not making mistakes even if there's and other areas to be improved on. Yes, and for me, Ted, then looking at this, Yu Song Kim, she's, we've talked about her sister, Yu Jae Kim, who's been on the circuit this year, and they push each other. It's now, now to me, brilliant though Yu Song Kim was, you now need to look to see what, where is she going to take this to be sevens in the components, to be plus, the, the spins could be plus four because of the quality, the speed, the position, but that flow and glide, that, edge control and depth of edge that now I'm looking for from Yu Song Kim, which weirdly, you know, she's probably got some of the best components that we've seen of the event so far, and yet I'm wanting more. I don't know where my brain space is at, but she's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long day, your brain space is. <laughs> <laughs> Yu Song Kim scores the short program 60.03. That'll tighten the race up. That'll put her currently in the third place. But ever so close as we take a look at the leaderboard, 61, 60, 60. 58, wow. Nobody at this point has separated themselves from the field. So on the ice, group number four. Five skaters of this group take the ice for the six minute warm up. down there, Mark. <laughs> yeah, no beat. Group number four. Yeah, we're powering through. I think, this, I think this is the longest day we've done. This is 13 hours. Wow, sir. Yeah, wow. Well, and highlights to come. Woohoo! Yeah, I had a girl. I had a boy. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's your, there's your brain space. In the yeah, the that's exactly right. I wonder, in this group, Ted, Inga Gurganitsa from Georgia, the 14-year-old who was third on the final Junior Grand Prix of the series last year. She was third, so I wonder, knowing that she has a triple axle, she could be a contender for Anna Pizzetta, who leads at present. Okay, here's my question oh. of this warm-up, okay? Okay, bring on. Now, so you're coaching a skater, and mm. let's say it's a woman skater, and mm -hmm. the parents come up and say, just made this new dress. We spent, you know, whatever we spent on it. What do you think of it? Now your brain is going, oh my gosh. But your lips are saying nothing at the moment. Okay. How do you, because you don't want to destroy anybody's effort or even overrule someone's taste. How do you cope with, as a coach, with a situation like that, that the parents or the choreographer or the dressmaker has got something that they think is genius and you do not? It's such a good question. What's this, like putting yourself in dilemma, dilemma. How would you cope in this situation? Okay, I'll tell you how I cope. I, I, You'd run away, I'm right? Glad that, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you suggested that the parents have come to me. Yep. So I then say to the parents, well, what does the skater think? Does the skater feel good? Does this boost the skater? Do you feel like your child or your skater feels confident in this costume? Because that, to me, wins the, the, the joy of the human, the confidence and the self-esteem of the human. Okay. And if this, so that, and then if they said the skater feels fabulous, I'd say great. My, and then should I? Should but not I a convincing, the, but not a convincing great, great. Yeah. <laughs> then I'd say if they want, because honesty is the best policy. If I thought that it 
didn't enhance the skater or perhaps I felt like the costume was going to cause some raised eyebrows from the judges perhaps, I might say to them, this is a subjective sport. I, I've got to be honest with you because you pay me to help your child have success. I think that this costume may make the judges think less favorably and I've just got to share that with you. But I will go with the self-esteem and the confidence of the skater and I'll back them 100% as humans, but I've just got to articulate to the bill pair, listen, I think that maybe this skirt could be a bit longer or yeah. we could... Yeah, or whatever. And you might even tweet. say, are you open? Are you willing for another opinion? You pick the person mm. and you get their input as well because you don't want to be a deciding factor on something like that. So, yeah, it's very delicate because um, you want to care for the feelings of the skater, the efforts of the parents, uh, the money that's been spent. Yeah. And, you know, that's all a challenge. And we've seen times we've had to change some skaters' outfits or even programs in some cases where they even the coach goes, okay, this is just not working. It's just not what I had envisioned, right? So sometimes you do have to change midway through a season. Okay, good. Not bad. It didn't take you too long to answer that question. So okay. about that. <laughs> let me think of something else here. So, Well, it's funny you say about the costume because there have been times when I've been partnered with someone who has been put in a costume that I thought, whoa, yeah, oh dear, this is not helping. Okay, what about you? Have you ever had a costume that you're going, mm, I don't like this? So, to be honest, I am uh, such a yes man. Yeah. So I've been putting costumes and I've thought, oh, geez, that's not making me look at my best. But I've sucked it up. As I've gotten older, and now, because I've got given maybe 10, 15 different costumes a year more, I don't know, and there's been times when I might suggest maybe to my friends in the wardrobe department, yeah. Maybe we could tailor this a little bit, but it would have to be pretty bad for me. Uh, pretty bad for me to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of delicate, isn't it? Yeah, so, so there's been times yeah. when I've, I've supported somebody that I've skated with who I think doesn't have a great outfit, and I've said, oh, you look great, you look fantastic, because I've thought that's the best thing that I need to do right now is to make them feel good or feel better because they're not going to skate as well if they think that I don't believe in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, good point. As we see the Canadian cheering squad barely moving their flags, we have to get them. Get off the Mind you, it's getting a little later today. It's been a long day. Mm -hmm. We've had the men's event. We've had the pairs event. Now we're into the women's event. We have to keep coming up with these questions. But the point of this is, is that coaching and working with children in many different families is a complicated, complicated complicated business mm. and it's not easy to read each person to what they need at the moment and how you best serve that and uh, we talked in our podcast about coaching a coach's life and that's why I'm asking these questions is to sort of think about and pontificate if you will and some of the challenges <laughs> coaches may have and you know this I've chatted with you Ted about some of the stuff you know each week we're watching different things we're getting given different influences and I've seen you know Netflix documentary about skating this week and it all makes you, you know, constantly be assessing, you know, your words. You, I remember you saying that maybe earlier on in the series and saying your words. And to me, what I'm thinking this week more than ever is just self-esteem of humans. I think, you know, everybody wants to have a winner. I want my students to go become world champion. That'd be nice. But I want self-esteem of the people I work with to be... Well, that's the most important important. thing because that lasts your lifetime. Skating doesn't. Mm. It's yep. just a short period of time. So self-esteem... And you may go through some low self-esteem in order to build self-esteem, but that is a process you have to go through. You don't just all, you know, immediately have it, especially when you're growing up. You may have it for a moment, and then you lose it. As we look at the first skater in group number four, you got Gurgenzi <laughs> from Georgia, 14 years old, second junior grand prix season, ninth in world juniors in 2023. He's done triple axel in competition, 63.04 personal best, getting the winter from four seasons.
giving to the last note of the music. Inga Gurgunit, uh, the Georgian skater who had high expectations. And up until that single Lutz, I think she had rightful high expectations. And I did think, Ted, she seems strong, faster with potentially higher skating skills this season. But there's no disputing she, the value of the loop. She made me think that about the difference between quickness and rushing. She's mm. very quick. And I was noticing that on her skating before, of course. But watch how quick she gets off the ice. Snaps off the ice into rotation. Beautiful. But on the Lutz, I thought this was rushed. Comes down the ice and jabs it right away. And she's not ready to lift up into the air. So that's a very, very fine line between quickness of release and rushing that takeoff. Such, it's a millisecond. And I think that caused that problem with the Lutz. And she was disappointed for sure because this is a very skilled skater. Look at that flexibility in the Beelman right at the end. Level three layback spin. And it's, oh, the coach doesn't look best pleased, but it's interesting <laughs> that the, it's for me, I was thinking, does she seem as much faster? So that falls in skating skills component, and it's great, it's very interesting to see. Judges, 0.7, or it's changing a little, higher in the skating skills than in the composition, because for me, it was very open. The transitions were simple and that wouldn't have been as big a consequence. You feel like she's being, she's suffering a little bit more in the composition and the presentation because of the impact of the single loops affecting the delivery of the program. Well, you can clearly see this young woman was on a mission and she was executing beautifully until that rush. I, it looked like she was just gonna take it for granted because she was so quick on the other jumps and she was in that mm -hmm. rhythm and she just did, but she just rushed it a little bit, popped it and caused a huge problem. I mean, right now she's still gonna, pretty good score but with that element she might have been in the lead or close to it at least mm. but we'll see what it is it's a 54.32 for Inga that's six in the short program so far but with that element she would have been up around 60 which is the top three in the leaderboard as we see right there wow disappointing she's a fighter she'll come back we'll see what happens in the three Our next competitor represents Denmark. 18-year-old Anna Flora Komar Jepsen. Third Junior Grand Prix season and Danish Junior National Champion. 43.5 a personal best last year, the final Junior Grand Prix in Enya Neumark in Italy. And she's gonna skate the short program to cry your heart out.
Ted, I am in love with this program. She used it last year. I remembered it. Anna Flora Conor Jepson has blooming brilliant choreo. It makes me get so passionate. I want to like shake her to get that technical content out. She excites me so much with the choreo. I want to. Come on, well, let's get the technical content. <laughs> I knew that I had to get some of those steps on there, so I didn't take the double axe. So I said, I better fill this because Mark's going to be upset if I don't get this stuff. <laughs> yeah, because you're right. She really moves so well and is completely, you know, in the moment, if you will. There's the triple toe loop. That was nice and clear, but a little bit too far forward. It gets up into the double toe loop. That's okay, but this Lutz here, this is more problematic. Didn't lift at all off the ice, lands completely forward. But here's the back camel spin, nice. This is in a level four, grabs the free leg, pulls that up, there's the chip forward, inside edge, part of the spin for a feature. Now let's watch some of these moves in here. Just a little shoulder move, just a little focus, a little head tilt. And the, the absence of the movement as well was that's so strong to be able to hold a pose yeah. and own it like that. Yeah, and just you know, isolate body movements, body parts in movement. This is the end or near the end of the step sequence. I just love that. Look at almost lost her balance back there, but it worked. Mm. And you know, I, I say it with the absolute gratitude to Anna and her sister, sister Leonora Comer Jepson, who's the choreographer. I love this. Let's hope she gets that tech content consistent so that we can enjoy seeing her as a senior as well because I think she has something to offer. Oh, she sure does. Absolutely. Mm, brilliant. Just, like, I want to go buy her a clean set of triples, a triple triple, and well, just have these so we can see you go and play you with know your what? choreography. If, if, if you could actually buy that, they'd be sold out <laughs> by now because everybody yeah. would want to buy, yeah. <laughs> buy one for myself as well. Yeah. Year. That would be extra money. <laughs> the older you are, the more it costs you. <laughs> Too right. Need new hips and knees. Well, the score is 40.34 for Anna Flora Comer Jepsen, and that is 12th in the short program. That's the reality of the technical skill that mm. she's at for the moment. But this young woman is, is great choreography, great body movement, great commitment to the music. Love it. Mm. Our next competitor represents the Czech Republic, 14-year-old Katerina Anusova. Second Junior Grand Prix season. The 43.65 is her best from last year, the Baltic Cup in Gdansk. And she'll skate the short program to Fighter by Christina Aguilera.
Katarina Hanyasova from the Czech Republic. And this is to the good quality jump technique. And this year, because the jump requirement is a loot, she's been pushed to add that triple loot. You can obviously choose double or triple. We haven't seen her do triple loot in competition cleanly before. And now that's the, the step up that Katarina is taking. Oh, here's a beautiful triple toe loop. Look at the height on that up into a double toe loop. Just wonderful. And what strikes me about this skater different from Anna Flora Comer Jepsen, and you can see a big lean on that triple lutz, that's to take the fall on that, is, and you'll see this in the steps, here's the double axle curving around the corner, but gets it done, gets up in the air. So really good jumper, good basic strong mm. technique, powerful off the ice, but the step sequence here, you don't see the same upper body engagement and movement and creativity and inno innovation yet. So here's two skaters, similar in the fact that they're might be around the same range of score but one for mm. for different reasons one for the technical and one for the pcs a little bit more absolutely and you know the, their way of getting the same score is so vastly different now, i actually feel i have a bit of guilt ted with katarina last year i remember being quite critical of the transitions and, and her composition of the program being quite simple but it was only because her, her jump technique as we've seen again today was so strong i actually think it's improved, but still, we have that inherent go-to. So, Katarina has a go-to, great jumping, loves her jumping, whereas Anna Flora Comer Jepsen has a go-to for composition and choreography. Yep, absolutely. But such, I love watching this young woman jump because it's so natural, and she just loves to leap into the air. And does it so well, so quickly, great height, checks out on the landings, beautiful. Get connected with the music a little bit more, a little bit more work on the PCs, and that's going to be a great help. 41.26, that is 11th in the short program for Katarina. And Anna Flora Comer Jepsen is 13th, so they're in the same range, but for different reasons, of course. Our next competitor, Leila Festic, 16 years old, first Junior Grand Prix season.
Lila Festic concludes her short program and she has competed internationally, Ted, but I don't think she's ever gone for double axle. So great for this skater then. That's yeah. such a benchmark. Well, you could see that double phenomenal. fist pump. She was absolutely thrilled with that performance. Maybe her top performance, we'll see. Gets this double axle, slips a little bit on the takeoff edge, but manages to stay with it. And it's clean in the judging system. That's good. Double flip. Too far forward on the landing and a little wrapped in the free lake in the air. And that slows the rotation down, of course. Here's that double lutz. That was a bit better. Better body alignment in the air. Still got lots of work in that to do. But like the way she reached out with her arms and her head leaning with some of the choreography. But still some basic skating skills work will go a long ways to gaining using momentum for all the elements and covering the ice. So we see the change combination spin at level two, so missing two features for that level four. But this is the stage of development that she's at. So well done, and she was thrilled coming off the ice with that mm. double axle. Maybe that was the landmark. First time in competition, I don't know. Yeah, and you know, watching her social media, she it amused me greatly. She posted a triple circle and she says, Sal's are finally being nice to me. And I think yeah. such a classic skater is amused. You think, oh, Lutz doesn't like me or Lutz likes me today. But So maybe we'll see a, a triple circle for Lila Festic added to the success that she's had in the short with the double axle today. I love that. You know, puts things in perspective and a little bit of sense of humor. The Sal's don't like me or, yeah. you know, whatever the case may be. <laughs> Actually, that was the jump that Although I could do it, the triple salka hated it because I would rip it, you know, just rip <laughs> yeah. that edge, you know, not lift <laughs> off of it. Another thing that Leila posted was the new team shirt. And again, that cements the pride and the the landmark it is to wear your nation shirt. Yeah. You know, she's got her team shirt and, you know, she can so rightly be proud to wear it. That's a big part of federations programming especially in japan and mm. canada united states and is having junior teams senior teams you know next gen teams so that yeah. skaters have goals to work towards you know let alone the competitions themselves Let's take a look at the score 28.07 for Lena festic that's 18th in the short program regardless mission accomplished you get the axle done lots of work on other areas so maybe phase one that double axle a big accomplishment well done Well, our next skater represents Canada, a 14-year-old Alexa Volkova. First Junior Grand Prix event. Part of the Next Gen team in Canada. And she'll skate the short program to Adagio by Sarah Brightman.
Alexa Volkova, a 14 year old born in Moscow, representing Canada. And credit to Alexa Ted because other skaters, with the frustration of the two opening falls, would have given in, but there was no sense of that. She fought through the step sequence, level four, and that committed to getting as many points as she could despite two fairly serious errors. Yeah, and she's, you know, when she first came to Canada, she was so quick and agile. There's the triple toe loop, not all the way around on the second one, doesn't get the free leg back, and has to take the fall, and here we see triple lutz, big inside edge there, back to the outside edge, back on the heel. And so now she's really, you know, having to fight the mind and the emotion. Cautious coming the double axle, but gets it done. And you know, these skaters, they're growing up and so many changes in their life. And sometimes mm. you put a little bit, just an inch of doubt can create some issues. But here's a beautiful movement in the steps. Yeah. Really wonderfully executed. Difficult forward inside loop in this cluster. And you can see the movement and the beautiful work that this young woman has and those jumps are not far away. She can do them. She didn't do them today, but she can do them. You put this whole package together, then wow. But a little bit more aggressive. I would want to fuel her up a little bit and get some more speed and momentum because she certainly has the ability and has the technique. Maybe just a little bit tight and cautious today as we see in the Kiss and Cry or Mom 14 mm. Vision 8. And I was looking and seeing that she'd posted on her social media in 2021 in January a clean, lovely triple loose. And, but that's no indication if it's you know, two and a half years ago, two years, nine months ago when you're landing your first triple loses and comfortably clean, that's, you know, there are those peaks and troughs, the, the progression for the skater is not one straight line curve, it's going to have these, you know, these debits within it and now the upset is and so we, sad. And we do not know, people do not know the, these skaters' life's journey. And some of these skaters' mm -hmm. life's journey has been extremely difficult and challenging. We're just watching the end result of the program here. 49.45 for Alexa Bokova from Canada. That's eight in the short program. So we'll see much more from this young woman. She certainly has the skill. To maybe take a little bit of time to get it organized and get herself in a positive strain. But life sometimes is just a bit of a challenge. We'll take a look at the standing so far after, how many groups now? <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> there we go, four groups, and we have three more to come. We're making it, Mark, we're still awake, it's good. Oh, yeah. There we go, <laughs> there's Anna Pizzetta still in first place. Wow, she skated wow. very early at Yihan Bang and Yusong Kim, the top three so far. Okay, Mark, what is on our Netflix playlist for this ice cream service? Well, it's all about the Mic'd Up series, so thank you to the wonderful team that we have for creating this series, and we're going to get a chance to see the Mic'd Up series with Walter Rizzo from Bangkok, awesome. and then to Mikhail Brezina from Osaka, and then to the ice dance coach Elisa Agafanova when she was in Istanbul with her students that uh, did so well for Switzerland, the first medal for Switzerland in ice dance. I think, I think you're going to call this uh, ISU series, not in the other name, that's the other part. Okay, here we go with an <laughs> ISU series of videos on the ISU servicing. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> so, but where do you buy the shoes? It's <laughs> the other one, I like two. This one is too much to me. Too much for you? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> È un ordine, vieni su che se con noi, vieni, ok? Sì, mi fa piacere, sì, sì, assolutamente sì. Per cui vai tranquillo come stamattina senza nessun problema. Mi fa, ma sei una super star, faccio no, sono vecchio. Bend, ok, pass e look crazy, dance. Okay, spend time to watch the judges on the ice. Bring them with you on the ice. Okay, make them dance. Okay, don't be boring. Okay, you are training to do this one. You go like this. Guys. Bene, così, capito? Tutto qua, eh? È tutto qua, capito? Presente in ogni passo. Oh, deve essere showman. 
dicendo però. Capito? Stai con lei però. Sì. Stai con lei. One, two, three, four. One, two. Come on! Meno sei punti e vediamo quanto prendiamo. Con la caduta e tutto saranno dieci. Cioè il secondo e il terzo volte sono giocati? Eh no? Third place. It's ok. Gli devi dare il mio numero di telefono. He has everything. He has everything? Oh, you're lazy. You need to give it to me. I am the assistant of the assistant. And he is my assistant. It's a long line. Oh, yeah. He did not hold back. <laughs> He did not hold back, I like that. Oh yeah, the computer's frozen. <laughs> Warm up just finished. Do you want me to stay over there and get you when, when like the third skater comes? Stay. You wanna stay? No matter what you're doing, just stay on your feet. And you'll be fine. You keep your body and you just use your legs to jump, use your arms to rotate, you'll be fine. You step into the jump around the corner, it's gonna kick you out. This is too much force. Everything's good. Stay soft. Yeah? Just use your knees. It's no different from any other competition. Yeah? Looks sharp. Just like your skating's gonna be, right? Let's go. Let's do this. All right, skate around, wait for your name, bend your knees, jump with your legs, and go for check. All right, let's do this. Come on. Get in. Check. Nice. Go ahead. Good. Hold it. Oh, speed up, speed up. Lutz was super nice. Probably the best one I've seen from you in a while. Yeah? Yeah. Bye -bye. All right. Good. Good start. Yeah. I like it. No, I go to skate. <laughs> Miss better twice. <laughs> you know the program. <laughs> Energy is there, okay? Let people like this transition how I like it, okay? Take the judge with you, that they feel they're in the race, okay? That they really feel they are watching the race. Make sure that, please, don't push so much. Curve enough, start the part, okay? There is your time to push. My red team. The nerves are there. It's fine. That's also fine. Yeah. Did he go home to grab the flag? <laughs> Did you go home to grab the flag? <laughs> it was half an hour inside. No, I could find it in my suitcase. Closer to me, no? Thank you. This lipstick, my mouth is drying out, and then I'm just my Typical part. I feel you present. I feel you on the ice. Good. How was the ice? It's slippery, but it's fine. Bend. Okay, not so far in the bracket, yeah? Manage the distance then. Yeah? The fox hold good. And make those faces smile, okay? <laughs> Breathe during the problem. Breathe. Entertain. 
you can do it. And that's it, okay? I need some extra nerves. <laughs> I was dancing there with you. You proud of your foot. It was good, huh? it was on the left, it was in the control. And entertain. <laughs> Wow, base, base. Whoa. Base is bad. Bad plus one and one on the step sequence. And a uh, key points. Key points, base, everything, yeah. Good score with like base. <laughs>
Welcome back, everyone, to Budapest, Hungary, and the first day of competition. It's been a long day so far. Mark Hanruddy joining me from Nottingham. He's at home in the comforts of his garage. <laughs> With a freshly painted door. So there, you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So we have group number five coming up right now. Three groups left in this event. And we had, of course, a, a little earlier today, the men's short program and the pair short and the women's short today. And then tomorrow we'll start with the dance, or the ry rhythm dance. That'll be your your baby. <laughs> I got it covered. Yeah, <laughs> I know you do. Okay, let's see. Hmm? Go ahead. What's the next question then? You're gonna. No, you gonna I was just thinking of that. I thought, oh, I got to come up with something else here. Um, <laughs> let's see now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I I have a question for you. If that's okay. Well, let me hear the question first. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I well, when watching this junior Grand Prix and watching all of these wonderful skaters, and we've talked about there was that wonderful correlation of. Um, Katharina Hanna-Sova from the Czech Republic and Flora Comer Jepsen, and the two very different approaches to getting a similar score. Now, mm -hmm. if you were to pick to be a coach in either one of the components or some of the elements, what would be your ideal? If you could pick a remit within a group of coaches, what would you gravitate towards? Okay, sorry. If I could pick a what? A remit? Yeah, like what would be your remit? In the coaching group, if everybody's got a role, where would you go? Oh, I see. Okay, so if I was going to work on a on a specific area, what what would I want to work on, right? What would yeah. be my strengths? Yeah, <laughs> okay, well, are we talking... Yeah, yeah, you, guy, you guys use weird words in English, for God's sake. I mean, really, I mean, they are charming at the times. They are charming and they are <laughs> funny. But sometimes they're hard to understand. Um, okay, I so... Um, but are you talking technical or PCs or... What, well, no, either. What would be... You know, within a coaching infrastructure, okay. where would you go? Um, I would definitely go to the lads because that was my best jump. I feel it. I know it. I understand it really well um, from a technical perspective. Mm -hmm. I think I would, you know, and I'm not, a, my brother was a, actually a very, he is a very good actor. And, um, but I like the fact that when you, you know, I know people can teach skaters to jump and to spin. That's out there. You can see that on streaming. Lots of places to learn it. Your coach can teach you. You know, you can you can really learn a lot yourself. Broken components are an area that takes a lot more than just you know. Let's learn the mechanics of a jump and jump right. So yeah. this is something different, and this is learning how to move your mind in the technical part, like narrow focus on a jump that's less than a second long, and then open your focus to each step and edge and and performance in connection with the music as well. If you're an audience, if you put the skater in the audience and you ask them, well, which, which skating do you like? Not jumping, which programs do you like? It's really interesting because some of them really don't connect with PCs, even when they're watching yeah. it, you know? They say, oh, I love uh, yeah. that jumping, you know? but they don't really connect with the program. So it's hard for them to learn that aspect when they don't recognize it themselves. So that's yeah. certainly something, as hard as that would be, that's what I would love to work on because that um, is talking them through something and helping them discover. I remember as a, st as a student, as an athlete, um, my, the one coach that, that helped me get past my barriers of understanding asked me enough questions that I had to find my answer. Uh -huh. As opposed to be telling me the answer of which you wouldn't hear half the time. It's like a parent tells your kid all the time. They go, yeah, 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 whatever. And then when, the, when you get older, when the kids get older, they don't even listen to you anyway. So what good is it, right? So yeah. I know I like working with teenagers because I know it's hard for them to understand. So if you can engage them in a conversation about, let's say, about PCs, about music. Most of these skaters don't listen, not these ones here, but many skaters don't listen enough to their music to really understand every nuance, every phrase. When you go high, when you go low, when you go out, when you go in, you know, they don't know the detail of that. So it's hard for them to pre present at that level. There, we just saw it, beautifully done, mm -hmm. as we leaped into a double axle. But 
that's the area that I would love to work in because I think that is something that you can learn, but you have to discover it. That's a funny thing. You can learn it, not necessarily be taught it, but you have to be brought to the point of discovery. Okay, did that cover the warm up? <laughs> that was great. Nicely played. Nice. <laughs> Nicely played. It's like a tennis match. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, It'll be back at me soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I just, you know, I don't know if I answered your question, but I like challenges because I know that a skater is only going to be really great when they have their own mind. And having your own mind is something that other people help you discover. And your greatest teachers in life, and you've only ever had anybody out there, probably has only ever had one or two great, not good, but many good, but great teachers. And those people made you think more. Those people made you discover more. And when you have that great coach or that great person, they make you a stronger individual, which means you'll be more successful. And that's what I would like to play. Rolling. Empowerment. Okay. See, I covered the warm-up. Here we go. Okay, wait a minute. Who are we going to? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Our first skater represents Switzerland, Anastasia Bredenberg. 13 years old, first junior Grand Prix season, second event, coming seventh in Istanbul. 52.72, personal best getting to Jane Eyre. Stunning finish position and so much fascinating information to share from Anastasia Brandenburg's coach. This 13-year-old from Switzerland was explaining that the Swiss school system mandates all children to attend school throughout the day without exception and that obviously places a challenge in their training time. But 
Linda was explaining that she has a deep unwavering passion for figure skating and a desire to see their skaters reach new heights and compete in par with Japan and Korea. So I can see here the triple lats. Keeps her hand off Whoa. the ice. How brilliant <laughs> was that? She knows and that that would be even a bigger reduction. There's the double axle. Lifts way up in the air. It's just amazing the posture, the attention to the detail of the hands mm. and the arms all the way through this program. It's just absolutely lovely. She's This young woman is just 13 years old and I was talking about that special, I don't want to say acting, but special connection with the music and feeling and you want to help young skaters discover that. Well, this young skater is born with that. Mm. I don't know if she was taught it. She might have helped, had helped developing it, but it's in her soul, it's in her heart. And you can see that with every move. Natural flair. Yeah, it's just beautiful. It was so interesting. To, even there, you can see the depth of the edge. I thought she had such deep knees, great inside counter into the back inside loop there, and back at, chopped off. Look at the hand and the arms and the head as well. So it's all body parts moving kind of synchronized together to make one image, but a moving image. And hearing a coach say that they want, they have a, a deep, unwavering, passionate desire to create skaters that compete with the best in the world. That is a glorious thing for, you know, an aspiring competitive youngster to hear. My coach wants to make me competitive with the best in the world. How then exciting that is for them. They, they just aspire for a better infrastructure to help to make that possible. Well, this young woman is well on her way. Still work to do in regards to strength and power on those triple jumps to get nice triple-triple combinations and whatnot. But that'll come in time. I absolutely don't doubt that. The PC score, she certainly has that in the mid-six ranges. Season's best at 57.15, nah. and she is thrilled. And she's saying, thank you. No, 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 thank you. Yeah. You're a beautiful skater. Well done. Keep exploring how good you can be because I think it's limitless, especially at the age of 13. 13 year old Leah Lebenova from Bulgaria, our next competitor, first Junior Grand Prix event. so interesting to see these young skaters from 13 to 17 to 18 years of age. They're all different. Leah will skate to cry me a river.
Bulgaria's Leah Lyubenova completes her short program and we were talking earlier Ted about the life commitment that this takes and there's some wonderful pictures of young Leah eight years ago at the Santa Claus Cup back in 2015 and her journey and her skating journey now taking her to the really illustrious Junior Grand Prix stage. Yeah, we take a look at some of the elements here. Here's the triple nuts, and that is uh, just being reviewed. Yeah, under rotated. I love that little pop after that on the exit. Triple salka, double toe loop. That was the planned element there for the combination. And the double axe, a little cautious. You can see your scratch in the back edge, and that double axe just comes around the corner, so it doesn't carry a lot of speed and flow and ice coverage in the air so you want to really open that up and fly across the ice some nice movement here you know you'd be happy with that mark <laughs> i loved it that was my favorite part of the program and leah uh, she's done lots and lots of ballet she's been on point shoes from an early age and you can see although it's not an immediate correlation you can see she did have good extension of the ankle with the free leg, so obviously taking from the floor and the valley studio to the ice. And actually, Ted, the triple loops, I saw her repeatedly going for loops and warm up, and whilst it was under here, I thought it was downgraded throughout the warm up, so that's a good example of a skater that's, we've talked about skaters that will hold back in the competition. Leah looked like she rotated better under the pressure of the competition than she did in the warm-up. Yeah, it's a really good point, Mark. There are some skaters that really don't catch your eye in practice, but when they get on that, they're just like a, a, a racehorse just wanting to get out of the gate. You put them in competitive mm -hmm. ice, and all of a sudden, everything speeds up. They're a little quicker, a little sharper. And that's a competitor, and that is a skill you also want to have. You can't teach that skill. That is in the person, in the soul, in the mind, of the skater, yeah. or it's not. And there are some skaters that aren't like that, but still, still are pretty good competitors for sure because they've been taught very well. But those skaters who just love that moment, the surge of mm. adrenaline, and takes them to a higher spot. As we take a look at the scores for Leah, forty-one point five three, and that'll put Leah currently in the thirteenth place. Now our next skater represents Finland, mm. and as we talked about, the Estonian and Finnish skaters did not receive their skates, and so I believe that the story has been told to us that this young lady went out and bought new skates. So if she's yep. skating the new skates here in the Junior Grand Prix, amazing. <laughs> 15 years old, second Junior Grand Prix season, second event of the year, fifth in Linz, National Junior Champion of Finland, 26 at the World Juniors. 57.88, personal best in the short program, skating to La Jazz Hot.
Well, Finland's Ida Karinen has made it impossible now for any skater to complain about having new skates. Yeah, I mean, that is absolutely remarkable. I don't even know how to explain it to a non-skater no. to have brand new skates. And I kept looking at her feet and saying, are they just really good, well-polished, older skates that she got <laughs> just before she got on the ice? Or are these new ones? And they look absolutely new. And you can see, you know, even with the skating, the basic skating, you can see a little bit of a struggle here or there. Yeah. But boy, was she focused on the elements. And just amazing the resilience of some of these competitors. Here's the triple flip at the top of the program all the way around in triple loop this is going to be under rotated on the loop nevertheless a miracle that she even did it in new skates yeah, yeah. double axles little brackets setting up that edge this one sort of curls around the corner a little bit i think she does that even with her own skates yeah. at the moment anyways that'll improve a little later in the program the triple lots Gets that all the way around. So that was really nicely done, but there was a couple little trips here. I think you'll see this coming up right here. The boots are really stiff. Doesn't give her enough ankle bend. And right in there, the blade got caught. And that would be something you would see with new boots. But wow, was she ever <laughs> focused. Amazing. Quite remarkable. And even, you know, our coach, our mums had to go out and buy new skates. That's expensive, challenging, all the factors within that. She's had to borrow somebody else's dress. That in itself, for most skaters, you, you know, spend time designing, having your dress created for the season, practicing, simulating. That in itself is another variable. But her coach, Marina Estrisheva, who's done such a marvelous job with her, just said, you know, she and her mom were more stressed than Ida, who appears to have just taken this all absolutely in her stride, as evident by that skate. And that is a quality you want in your skater to be able to handle changing scenarios, changing environments. Just, you know, really remarkable. And, you know, I'm not sure which airline it was. We won't mention them online. <laughs> but shame on you. But maybe, maybe it did her favor. I don't know. 56.01 for Ida Karunin from Finland. And that puts her in seventh place. Wonderful job, young woman. You should be very proud of yourself. Coping with that situation such a young age you'll need that as you grow because life throws you so many curveballs you have to know how to hit them as well that's a baseball term <laughs> <laughs> I like it. okay well our next competitor 13 year old Chiki Gao from Ch China not any record a personal best scores first time out on the junior Grand Prix she'll skate the short program to Gladiator by Hans Zimmer.
Well, Yihan Wang from China lies currently in second place, and we have been vocal all series long about some brilliant Chinese women, but Shiki Gao, the young 13-year-old, may have just usurped them all. Just no, we have to, you know, we have we we report what we see, and we know that there is a movement, a youth team coming up in China. It's just extraordinary abilities. The triple foot. Look at the lift on that. Up into a double toe loop. And you'll see, you're going to like some of the step sequence because you're going to see a lot of the facial mm. expression. Here's the double axle. Nice turns coming into that. Lifts way off the ice. Covers a lot of ice in the air. And then the triple lutz pops straight up. Great height. It pushes that free leg back just in time. Here's some of the steps. Look at the face. You can see the engagement in her eyes and her arms on every step and every curve. So it's not only the steps that she's doing, the upper body is working that music and the phrasing as well. Great soft knees on that. And gorgeous free leg extension as well, indicative of so much time, either as a ballet dancer off the ice or just good tuition on the skating skills. And interesting, Ted, of all the Chinese women that we've seen, which we've so enjoyed as we see these closing moments for Shiki Gao, I don't think any have gone for triple-triple in the short. They seem to be in the same consistent trajectory. Good quality skating, good quality triples, next stage of development. It wouldn't surprise me if next year we see them with triple-triples and triple axles. Just huge progression. Well, they know what they're trying to build here. They're trying to build a sk all round skater, and you have to build the skating skills first. Japan has shown that. Korea has shown that. Right, a number of other countries have shown that and participated in that skating skills. Some Americans, of course. 60.40 for Shiki Gao from China. And that puts her right up there in third place. So we'll take a look at the leaderboard. Top four skaters have 60 uh -huh. or 61 points. Wow, that's amazing. Beautiful quality. Our next competitor represents the Netherlands, 17-year-old Yolanda Vos, coached by Jorik Hendrik. First Junior Grand Prix season, Bavarian Open silver medalist, prestigious competition early in the year, skate to Blood Diamond and the Lion King.
the 17 year old representing the Netherlands born in Tilburg, Yolanda Voss. Although another skater not with the highest technical difficulty, it's good to know that this is a skater who had a serious ankle injury that kept her off the ice for three months and the Dutch junior champion has rallied hard to compete here as Jorik Hendricks greets her off the ice. Well, such important information to know because you may, as I said, we don't know the background of some of these skaters and why they are where they're at in their development. And they could be just perfectly running at a high level, then something happens in their life and things slow down. You look at the double axle, you're a little scratchy on the back edge, and it gets it done right up into a spread eagle. A nice layback position, side to back. Grabs the skate. Level four, lay back spin. And I thought, Ted, through the step sequence, the flow through the cluster was really impressive. I thought she maintained ice coverage. So whilst the technical content with the jumping pass is not as strong as others, there's a foundation that is strong. And Jorik Hendricks has worked so hard with his team. He's created summer camps with Jorik that has helped so many other athletes. And I'm sure Yolanda's very proud to have such a passionate coach on her team. Yeah, no question. Everybody's at, you know, you can have the best camps and whatnot, and you just have to know where you're at and what you have to do. And as we talked about, some of these uh, athletes are in heavy scholastics. Some of them have more time mm -hmm. off with sports schools and whatnot. Some don't have enough ice time, etc. Everything is a little bit different with everyone, and in some cases, a lot different. You can see York just trying to bring in a little bit of balance and humor to the moment. She weighs heavily on the scores. 35.85 for Yolanda. That'll put her currently into 21st, 21st place. Well, there is our next competitor representing Armenia, born in Yarvin. That'll be the host city for the final Junior Grand Prix this season. 13-year-old Sofia Karapetian. She'll skate to Torn by Nathan Lanier.
Armenia's Sophie Karapetian, a 13 year old who has posted so many pictures of the summer where she was training with some illustrious esteemed coaches. And that's been the motivation to get her here to the Junior Grand Prix. First Junior Grand Prix assignment, having been a novice just last season. And I would imagine we'll see her in Yarvin as well. Mm. Yeah, listed for that event. There's the little axe off the top of the program, back on wow. the heel in the landing. If your weight is behind your foot, you're gonna take the fall. You have to get that free leg behind you to stabilize. Push your weight a little bit forward, right over the ball of the foot. There's the triple soccer, same thing here. Too far back, free leg is stuck in front. Yeah, that's the one thing you need to really think of when you're in the air, starting to check out of the jump, get your free leg out and push it back. There's a double lutz. She, well she does there. that there. She gets the free leg back <laughs> just to hang on. And as we see the layback, Sophie is... She posted a video of her double axle journey, and it is a journey for the skaters to get there's so many stages of evolution for a jump like the axle. It's the kind of bridge into the big kids jumping ground. And you know that, that journey for the double axle, she's yet to have one called cleanly at a competition. <laughs> Went for it today. Maybe this event is the, the I like journey. That. The, the big kids <laughs> jumping. Yeah, that's, that's yeah it is. <laughs> Well, the score is 26.75. That's 25th for Sophia in the short program. And there's the look. Anna Pizzetta of Italy still in first place, but three skaters right behind her in 60 points. Boy, it's going to be exciting in the free program, that's for sure. As our group number six takes the ice for their six minute warm up. We see Jia Shin of Korea taking the shield skate first in this group. She threatens that lead, I'm sure. <laughs> so, Mark, if you were running a federation, there's another question mm -hmm. here we're going to fill some time on. <laughs> hypothetical, of course. If you were running a federation, you know, that has resources, has a, a nice rink, ice rinks, pardon me, uh, coaches, et cetera, everything you need, and you're looking up above and you see Japan, and you see Korea, and you see United States, and you see some other countries that, you know, it's Canada, Estonia, fin you know, Finland and Sweden, and, you know, countries, the odd ones are there, and it's, it's good, and you're wanting to really challenge the top as the number of federations want to do. What do you believe as a federation you have to do to unify and to get everyone, all of your skaters, at top basic skill level? Like every single Japanese and Korean skating pretty much it comes out here, their you know, their basic skills are fantastic, right? How do you do that? Or is it just the coaches, is it just by chance and the coaches have to be good? Is that driven by coach and by federation? How does that work? Well, it's so fascinating and it was so interesting to hear from Linda Van Troyen who worked with Anastasia Brandenburg and had done such a great job in trying to get skaters from less, uh, I would not even say less developed, but less successful skating nations to be competitive, to be on par with those powerhouse skating nations. If I was to try to, to create that, then there needs to be such burning desire and passion. Now, if you're not on the front line, if you've not got we see some coaches, some individuals who can make that that powerhouse movement with some individuals. If you're talking about federations, then that requires an infrastructure and that requires multiple humans on the same page to not just make, you know, a one-off skater from a nation. We've seen, you know, we've seen one-offs that do brilliantly because there's a concentric group of small to get that infrastructure, it just needs good humans and that really requires outsourcing and inspiring. If there's not money to do it, if there's not an abundance of money, government funded or however, then you need people to be inspired 
you need to lead, I think, uh, a collective group that are inspired on the same page of creating world class, like Bin Yao did for Chinese pair skating. He obviously was so passionately inspired, he led a team that created a generation. Um, and and so you, that's what, not an easy feat. No, so really what you're saying is you need leadership. You need leaders. Yeah. And yes, thank that, you for... And committed to Spotify. such a high level, right? Oh, sorry, Ted, the, the streaming went out for me there. I just missed your last point, sorry. No, that you need leadership uh, in any yeah. organization at such a high level. Now, mind you, big organizations have to service much more. They have thousands of clubs and coaches and skaters, and it's really not about elite skating at that point. It's just about participation because you have to serve your public. So mm. the smaller nations, to some degree, have an advantage in a way, a small way. They may not have the resources, they may not have the number of skaters, but they can do just as much with less, you know, if you get yeah. the right skaters in development. The big federations have a much more difficult time. They've got, you know, not like hundreds of thousands of skaters they have to service. Mm. Interesting question. Uh, don't want to go down that well, rabbit hole too far, but you know. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and uh, what I, I notice is that often those that give up their time voluntarily, finding people that will be able, able in a place in their life to give up their time voluntarily, free of ego, that's a real challenge because you know, we all have a vested interest in something, and sometimes when you get people that you don't know, give up their time, they have that vested interest. It's, it's a real, real life skill or real amazing attribute when somebody will give up their time for the support of others yeah. freely. That's a real That's rare true. select goal. Okay. Um, what else can I ask you? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I actually I, I was just going to say that this week I have seen bits and bobs that really uh confirmed to me the merits of increasing the age into seniors yeah. for True. a holistic approach of humans and I love the sport of skating I love to see quadruple jumps I love to see greatness both technically and from components uh, but my awareness has been heightened it's always been pretty, pretty aware but my awareness has been heightened for these humans on the ice and whilst that doesn't have a tangible point scoring value I am here for the long-term humans in our sport, not just high schools. Yeah, absolutely. That's you know creating that environment that these young athletes can excel at whatever level that's going to be for them in a happy environment while still being able to achieve greatness. I think that I don't I don't think anybody's intent is to stop the growth of greatness because no. that's the way the sport changes. So somebody will take it to a new level or a different direction. I don't think it's on anyone to shut it down and say, well, you can't do that. At the same time, you have to do everything safely for these young people, uh, both physically and psychologically. And so that takes a much more detailed and thoughtful approach, which it didn't have to be so much in the past, but it does now. And people are yep. learning new ways to do it. They have to, and it's in the best interest of all these athletes as people. Okay, here we go. This is group number six. One more after this. We're down to our final 12 skaters. I don't hear you jumping for joy, but... <laughs> I'm really excited to see this one. Yeah, no question. Our next competitor represents the Republic of Korea, Jia Shin, 15 years old, third junior Grand Prix season. Last season, Junior Grand Prix final silver medalist, World Junior Silver Medalist, winner of the Junior Grand Prix Week 2 in Linz. 71.19 personal best, 70.38 season's best. Skating to fascination.
it's hard to comprehend that she's still just 15 years of age, two-time junior world championship silver medalist, Jia Shen. And in isolation, submarring the mistake on the opening combo, in isolation, we should just have to acknowledge, a beautiful, elegant, refined, quite lovely skater. Oh yeah, no question here, we see the triple flip, triple toe loop with the hand down right there. Seems a little bit forward, so starts the program with a bit of an error, but doesn't really make any more mistakes after that. The lax was just beautiful. Watch the movements, a little hop, left arm up. All the little details here is Anina Bauer. Steps back for the triple lot, straight up in the air. Soft, then three turn. Anina Bauer, watch the head move up towards the arm. All those little details, they're hard to pick out of your not a skater, but that was, that's what makes the difference between the top group mm. and the middle group. And there's no doubt Gia will lead the field. My thinking, Ted, is just the comparison with Mao Shimada. And Gia, I so love watching her elegance. Different style from that which Mao has gone for her short program. And it's then that fine detail, the point of the toe now, is quite as intense as Mao. The, you know, the cleanliness of the line isn't quite as intense, and that's what's taking Mao's components to the eights, as opposed to the mid sevens. Gia is stunning, beautiful, gorgeous, and it's just putting that Bunsen burner under the components to just take them into the eights. Well, both are incredible skaters, and in that case, I wouldn't want to be on the panel. I mean, you, <laughs> yeah, could, yeah. You, know, you could be, and you put your scores down, and it goes into the pot, and results come out, but they're both exquisite and such a great joy to watch, as many others are as well. Jia Shen, 66.25, and that'll put her currently into first place. Good five-point lead. We can take a look at the leaderboard. There it is, 66, 61, 60, 60, 60. Ah. But it had some nice skating, some nice programs here today so far. Hopefully more to come. Our next competitor represents the Republic of South Africa. Gia Quen Isaacs, 18 years old, fourth junior Grand Prix season. Personal best back in 2019, 43.29 in the short program. She'll skate to the tango of Roxanne.
We're well, punctuating that powerful music with a finish. And Jean-Claude Isaacs, the 18-year-old representing the Republic of South Africa, said she has a special place in her heart for Budapest. She competed here six years ago as a basic novice and now back on the Junior Grand Prix here. Well, you know what? I thought this was a great program for this young woman. Mm. And so well skated. You can see a nice hug coming off the ice. And wow, it did some nice elements as well. There's triple sow, double toe loop. Nice and clean. Double Lutz after that. Beautiful flow through, the little spread yeah. eagle. And the double axle winds up this way off into the air. Covers the ice nicely and a little hop there as well. Right into the change combo spin, which was the level four. And I did catch that little, in the step sequence, I don't know if you noticed that little leap backwards. I don't know what you would call it. You'll see it in a second. <laughs> I thought, oh, Mark will like that. I um, uh, appreciate it. <laughs> but it was unique. It was different. There wasn't a lot of detail in the steps, but here it is coming up here, I think. That, right there. Oh, yeah. I thought that was, you I didn't was even pay attention. You didn't even notice that before. Where, that was where really was my no, space? That was really <laughs> I'm nice. I'm glad you brought it back to our attention. No, I thought that was nice. It was really, really unique and different. I love the ending. Very powerful. Nicely done. And yeah, and I thought she she really owned that, and she explained that she's benefited from the collaboration with the Ice Lab in Bergamo. She was there last week en route to here, and she explained she was excited but nervous at the same time about coming here, and now all that adrenaline and nerves can release, and she can enjoy celebrating what is the product of so much hard work to deliver the skate. Well, that she is, must like, be absolutely thrilled with that performance. That is probably one of her best performances. Everything was nice and clean for the stage of development that she's at. And you can see she's sort of excited coming off the ice, full of energy, and numbers don't really matter. I think feeling proud of what you've done does, and numbers will help, but. <laughs> at 46.77, and, oh, they got something oh. there. The She's got score. the tech score for Junior Worlds. There Wait, you go. She's got 12 hundredths of a point higher. That's the reason for that. There That's you gorgeous. go. That was exciting. Yeah. Yay. She's in 13th place and got the short program yeah, yeah, score yeah. for qualifying <laughs> for Junior Worlds. Thrilled. Wonderful. Our next competitor represents Hungary. 14-year-old Martina Petra Major. Coached by Patricia Pavic. First Junior Grand Prix event. And here at home. Let's skate to the music from Vanessa May.
what a moment for Martina Petra Major. She is a member of the club here since her first steps on the ice and now first time that Hungary has held a Junior Grand Prix for many years and she can proudly represent her nation and her club even after an injury in July that forced her off the ice for three weeks. And I don't think anything would have stopped her competing here. Yeah, that's amazing really. She started skating here and in a Junior Grand Prix final right at home. That is perfect timing. Yep. When we take a look at the triple toe loop. Just have to step out of that. It's on the quarter, there's the double axle, gets that done. There's the layback side position. Back. Air cutter up into the Beelman. He's in level four. Minus GOE of, one point, uh, of 0.18 though, so quality will take it down, but the level of difficulty, quality took it up. I thought, good job by coach and choreographer Andras Sternoch, who some appropriately phrased tangle movement for the start particularly, and I just, I think words are irrespective of what we can comment on the performance. Yes, of course, things can be developed, the skating skills can be refined, of course, but as a life moment, to be a Hungarian competitor in a Hungarian Junior Grand Prix in your home ring, massive yeah it's important it's not easy for these young skaters to think of it this way but it's important to treasure the moments because you never know if they come around again and yeah. so when you're there you're you're not thinking future but you'd like them to really enjoy the moment so it's a memory and i think it's i think i read it was 14 years since there was last uh, a junior grand prix held in, in hungary so you know Lucky that this generation of Hungarian skaters can experience it. And it may happen again next year, but for now, it makes it all the more poignant because it's been so long since it was possible. Well, we'll take a look at the short program scores. For Martina. 32.12. And then to put Martina Petrik Major in the 26th position. And there is a look at our next competitor representing Poland, 15-year-old Veronika Ferlin, third Junior Grand Prix season, 24th last year in Ostrava on the Junior Grand Prix. 41.54 personal best back in 2021. So would expect that score to go up a little bit here. And she will skate to Tosca Fantasy.
the 15-year-old Veronica Perlin, and she, one of many that will be competing in back-to-back -back Junior Grand Prix events when she competes in Gdansk next week. And she, another skater, so eager for that coveted minimum technical element score in the short program for Junior Worlds. And she has another chance next week. A high five worthy today. And here we see the double axle. Good lift off the ice. Nicely done. All the way around. Triple toe, to double, uh, triple toe, triple toe was a problem. The first one was good, but not enough air time or quick enough in the rotation. Takes a downgrade on the second one and a fall. Double lots a little bit later in the program. Bit of a wrap free leg there. Not a big deal for a double. Look at that flying suspend. Straight up, straight down, perfectly centered. Right slightly behind the toe pick. So Nice spinning location, good speed throughout that mm. spin. And that is a flying suspend in a level four. Eight revolutions, difficult variation, fly. And it's interesting the tactics, you know, embraced by all for Veronica next week. So here she's got level one in the step, level two on one spin, level three in another. So you could pursue those over the next week to try and get up to 25. She needs five and a half more points from this to get that to yes. Or maybe that triple toe, triple toe, if it's clean next week, that could be enough to bridge the gap. Yeah, it's interesting because the skater will immediately go to the jumps because they think, well, if I land on the jump, yeah. it'll be fine. But really, when you're giving away points and spins, which is, I, I, I would have to guess, not guess, estimate that it's a little easier. Yeah, it's not as mm. easy for patience. You have to be more patient, but it's physically easier to get those points in the spin. We'll see, 35.16 for Veronica Ferlin from Poland, 24th in the short program at this point in the competition. Gonna need another six points in the short program next week to get that world qualifying score. As we see our next competitor who represents the United States of America 14-year-old Sherry Zhang, second Junior Grand Prix season, fourth in U.S. Junior Nationals. 57.85, personal best from last season. We'll skate to the Illusionists.
Well, for from the United States of America, and this head is a fascinating young woman. She will be bitterly disappointed with the fall and the jump combo, but she lives six hours away from her coaches, so she does lots of virtual lessons and independent practice from home. And Chris Pottinger, her coach, just explaining what a dedicated, hardworking student she is. Beautiful first triple toe loop, and then look at that, just slips off that edge. Freelay got stuck in front, couldn't punch it back quick enough. Double axle here, arms and free leg snaps forward. Beautiful lift, wonderful speed on that landing curve as well. And here is a look, triple lats, this was nice. We done, great height all the way around. And that flying sits spin. In the level four, so all four features accomplished with the plus GOE. And here we take a look at some of the steps. Let's see, great expression, use of her upper body. Step sequence in at a level four as well. So that's great. See that in junior. Not that an content. Easy, not an easy <laughs> ending, that's for sure. No. And Coach Chris was explaining that she's got a one-year-old brother, so she helps with him being a sibling role model. And I think, you know, 14 years old, and obviously her coach explaining what an incredible level of maturity to have the quality she's just demonstrated with so much of it being self-driven. Obviously, good education that she's getting from her coaching staff. And no question. self-driven. Short program scores for Sherry Jank, 14 from the United States, 59.31. Seems to be pretty happy with that score. That'll put Sherry currently into sixth place, but bunched up with a number of other skaters in the 60 and 59 range. So she's really in striking distance of that podium. Yep. Absolutely. It'll be a battle in the free program, that's for sure. So we take a look at our next competitor representing Hungary, 14 year old Paulina Zumani Zuzova. Second Junior Grand Prix season, second event this fall, placed eighth in Istanbul, also was 16th at the World Junior Championships, 55.26, season's best in Istanbul. Skating to Adios, Nonino.
skating for Hungary in Hungary, Polina Germaniazova. And we saw her talent and potential in Istanbul, and it looks like she's gone home and worked so hard on the spins, which gave her some frustrating levels in Istanbul. You know, the interesting thing, I was looking at the step sequence, trying to find those pieces that you like, and I really couldn't <laughs> find, no, I really couldn't find too many there. I mean, certainly a good skater, no question, beautiful elements, as we see right here, but the step sequence, some nice movements, but that's another area in which you can improve on. We'll see what the step sequence is, only in level two. Uh, interesting. Here's the that's triple the flip. Edge. Nicely done. Reloads the triple toe loop, makes sure she gets all the way around. Triple Lutz, down low in the knee, pushes straight up in the air. She's certainly got some great movement and choreography, but in the steps, just a level two, I thought more could have been done with that. I mean, that's being super picky, because this is like a really good skater, so shouldn't, well, even, wait, shouldn't even say anything, but I just think she's really well, good, so I expect it. Yeah. And, and what will happen to it is she's gone from having three level threes in Istanbul, she's got, on the spins. Yeah. Now she's got three level fours, she's going to hear this, and I bet next time we see her, she's got a level four step as well. Yeah, and, I hope so. Yeah, I know. Yeah, absolutely. We can help the skaters get more, but, you know, she's going to take, you know, beat her season's best already, mm -hmm. and her personal best as well, and she's got more to give. No question. This is a very, very good skater. Well, she also is kind to us, Ted, because Polina, when she replied to my request for any intel, said, I understand that my surname might be challenging, so she gave me a more phonetical help on that challenging surname. She, so meant, she said she's kind to. She said challenging for Ted, not for you. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, no, for I'll sure. No question. Let's take a look at the short program score. Season's best, 59.95, and that is six in the short program. A lovely skater. And you can see she's very determined, so much more to come for her. She's on a mission, not only today, but long term. You just see her biting her lip going, okay, okay, okay. I know where I am. It's <laughs> better, but I want to get better. That's cool. There's a look at the standing so far. Jia Shen, 66.25. Anna Pazetta, 61.12. And Yi Hanji Wang, 60.43. Your top three skaters so far. And it's very close after that, all the way down to really number 11. Much more to come. There are six skaters yet to skate, and this is our last <laughs> ISU flicks <laughs> playback video during the ISU service. What do we have up? Well, this is from the series of videos, A Day in the Life of, so a day with Roman Ponsard, and then the next video will be that of Ingrid Walter, the technical controller, and an insight into their work on the tech panel, and then to Suwana Selpa Archer and the discussion that you had with her, or the day in the life with her from your time in Bangkok. Okay, sounds good. Hope you enjoy it. We'll be back right after this. Send me a message and he said, uh, I was just thinking you don't have a Swiss jacket. No way you go on the Kizan Pai with the French one. <laughs> I like the white I wear. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Romain Ponsard. I'm a figure skating coach for France and Switzerland. And I'm here in Osaka and I wish I could go back to my junior world and get on the ice and do a programs. But I'm here as a coach now. It's my first season coaching and I really enjoy it and really excited to be here in Osaka. And we will uh, today uh, have the free program uh, run through uh, for my skaters and first time touching the ice here in Osaka. So we'll see how it goes. François, j'ai fait tomber le téléphone. <laughs> Merci. What I'm looking for on this kind of practice is first adapt to the ice ring because it's a new environment for the skaters. Also do the pattern of the program, to always to adapt of the size of the rink and the atmosphere of the rink. Always when you do a long travel like Japan, you arrive for, to the first practice and you feel like your stamina is so bad always. So it's important to have it running one first time. And after we went through all the jump, uh, one by one and on sections like in the program. And after that, we finish with a spin to show uh, all the level uh, to the controllers that are watching the practice. 
So now it was supposed to be lunch break, but he wanted to watch the practice of the men, so his competitor. So this is going to be our lunch break from the skating lounge. And we are actually lucky because in Japan the food is really good, so we will enjoy uh, the food and keep watching the practice of the men. <laughs> so here I have two different types of skater. I have Eugenia, that is her first Junior Grand Prix, so she's pretty stressed about it. And I try to bring it to her as just getting experience that we didn't expect really something from her beside uh, to uh, enjoy this experience. And on the other side, we have uh, Francois Pito from France that is trying to go to the final, Junior Grand Prix final. So he got second to his first Junior Grand Prix in Bangkok. And now here he is going to try uh, to get on the podium to be able to participate at the Junior Grand Prix final. And with him, it's an approach where it's more about confidence and trust in himself and just to show one more time what he does at practice and not to do more because he's the kind of skater that wants to try the day of the competition to show more. And try when you do everything to relax, go deep in your knee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're a little bit stiff, that's why I relax. Just enjoy the moment, okay? I cannot endure it, there are two minutes. <laughs> and pick up. You can go for chopper. Hey, good job, Avina. Proud of you. Really well handled. Yeah. I want to have this. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, we're perfectly normal. Yeah, okay. I wasn't so sure yesterday either. Uh, after the event. Hi, everybody. I'm Ingrid Charlotte Walter. I'm an ISU technical controller for Ice Stones and an ISU referee for Ice Stones singles and pairs. And my job here in the Junior Grand Prix in Linz is the technical controller for Ice Stones. So we are here sitting together, the so-called technical panel. Um, we have the job of looking at the elements all the couples, dance couples have in their program and in finding out what kind of features they do because the elements themselves can be made more difficult and get a higher value by having more and difficult features. Exit. I question the split. Yes, question mark, no. So this is a lot of material one has to take in very, very quickly. And that is why we sit in the practice time and try to find and see what they are doing. We write that down in a kind of shorthand, which every person devises for him or herself. For instance, I draw a lot. You can see that later on on the sheets we have, um, whereas others just do it in numbers, which frightens me. I couldn't do that, but there are number people, so that would be fine for them. And when it comes to the competition, we transfer the elements and the features onto the competition sheet. Of course, no level at all, because we have to see what of what could be there is really performed. And that is then what we mark down but it speeds up everything very quickly. Usually we have two technical specialists. These are my two colleagues, Roxanne and Helen. And the one calls mainly the men and the other mainly the woman. And if we have, for instance, a spin in which both are involved, it is the specialist one who does the call of the level. Um, also to the team, 
belong the data operator. He puts in the levels and the elements we call into the program and the um, software so that the judges on their judges stand get the elements in the right order on their screen because they have to evaluate the quality. And we have a video cutter of course because we have one whole program of three to four minutes and we just need the little clips which are also used to review by the judges and by us whatever is shown and so the video cutter cuts as soon as we say this element is coming up that is one of the technical specialists always says next element and then the element they know they can prepare what they have to cut and then the specialist one says the element when it starts. As soon as the program is finished, again, the data gives us the number of elements. Also, on which we called a review. A review is something we call when we are not quite sure whether it was really seen. What we saw, for instance, we have two people on the ice and in a step sequence, one of them could well hide the steps of the other by just being there, obviously. So then we would need, as an example, a review to see whether we can really have a look at the other steps. If not, we go with what we have seen and go always with the skater. I think that completes the whole process. I'm afraid it was more than three sentences. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we can cut. Here in Bangkok with Suwana from the ISU Council. Suwana, I um, want to talk about a couple of things, but first of all, the initiative of sustainability. Of course, you've been a great leader in that. Tell us how that all got started. Um, yes, I have to say, I am really excited too for the first ISU event, the JGP, that happened here in Bangkok. We are the first ISU event that carbon neutral. So the, um, I, I would like to start with the, you know, I have to thank you, Mr. J. Yu Kim, our president at He's really encouraged all of us to do these initiatives um, on sustainability. So that is the way. And we have Maria Teresa, who is the chair of the working group on sustainability as well. So we're working a lot on, and you will see some things like changing now. Yeah, we've seen some new people, of course, come in. Jay Ul came in uh, in the Congress right here in uh, Thailand, of course. Um, tell us a little bit about um, the, this event here. I know you've got, you've shown me the kiss and cry, of course, and, and, and the mats that we stand on. Tell us a little bit about the background to that. Right. Um, you know, a lot of us that we are in sports, right, we didn't concern that much on environment. But believe it or not, we are really one part of the big issues. You know, if everyone's help and if all of us help, it's, it's the world will be better. I mean, you know, we all should help. So that is the thing. And um, my husband, he is also into this um, environment. So that's why I learned from him a lot. And um, he's the one who's trying to save. And I am the one who like producing a lot that doesn't match. So that's why I learning on this. And then now here we are. So, yeah. Well, for those of you that are not here, of course, we're getting to see just exactly how this event has been un unfolded. You know, the kiss and cry, of course, is completely sustainable. It's, you know, cardboard to a lot degree, but it doesn't look like it. It's just beautiful. The mats themselves, the whole arena itself is just amazing. You would not know any difference. So a fabulous job so far. Uh, and moving forward, um, of course, this is on the Junior Grand Prix. Looking forward, you're wanting to influence the Senior Grand Prix as well in sustainability. Yeah, that would be good. You know, that is like everyone's, um, should be any, everyone's initiatives. And it's not that difficult. If you really want to do it, you know, that um, we can do it together. The ISU really support on these initiatives. So if there's any questions, you know, feel free to ask me. Well, thank you very much for that. And of course, uh, being the first time here in Bangkok, in Thailand, the Junior Grand Prix, really the juniors has been able to globalize the sport, move around the world rather than people coming to us. We're going to them. And it's very exciting to be here. We thank you for everything that you have done uh, here at this competition, but also for the sustainability of the ISU. Thank you, Suwan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Swati Ka.
Welcome back, everyone, to Budapest, Hungary, the final group in a very long day of competition. We've had the men's short program, the pairs short, and now the women's short program will conclude with six skaters. I'm joined by Mark Conradi in his garage <laughs> studio. <laughs> I'm just joking. You have a nice studio built up in there, Mark. Yeah, I. Uh, at one point, maybe just one point, this will be a room worthy enough of sending you a video, but right now it's on the <laughs> Well, you have painted doors. I mean, I always like to check Literally. what Mark has been doing on our breaks because he the <laughs> other day he was, what, you emptied the dishwasher and then you yep. ironed some clothes or you got breakfast ready for the kids or something like that. You know? Oh, that's yeah. Always, always hustling. <laughs> daddy, daddy, do, daddy duties. That's so smart. Listen, I got some intel here. You know, I did some work. Oh, wow. Go, go, okay. go. I'm not at M, 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 I5. What is it? M5? M5. M5. I'm not at that standard, obviously, yet. Um, yet. But the skater from Estonia, Natalie Lage Lagebauer, she is oh, yes. going to be skating in brand new skates as well. We oh, just saw that um, a little earlier uh, from uh, Ida Karunen from Finland. So you know what? What's happened is the airlines have bought the new skates. With oh, insurance, wow, that's so cool. these skaters. I was wondering why would you know why would you do that? Because yeah. there's insurance on it, and so nice. these these skaters have got the new skates and using them and have them that's for the rest of the year. Because the I, I'm not sure the exact in and out, but another airline, Singapore Airlines, supported one of the skaters from Singapore and going from back to or from different junior Grand Prix assignments. So. Maybe the airlines aren't all money-grabbing bad guys. <laughs> well, you haven't been to my country. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. And, mm. you know, it's just amazing how these young skaters have adapted. And, I mean, it's just incredible to do your triple-triple combinations in a brand-new pair of boots, which looks like cement blocks on your feet. Yeah. It's hard to do the step sequence than it was the, to do the jumps. Yes. It's just incredible. And what it now does is it gives the skaters two pairs of skates and then they have next year's skates already broken down. So they're walking skates. away with a profit here, let me tell you. you know? uh, yeah, win-win. Exactly, so that's awesome. Okay, we obviously have no questions in there. I'm going to have to think of something on you. I, well, I thought one for you. I mean, I've got an answer for it, so maybe I want you to we'll swing it back either way. But you posed the brilliant question as to what I would suggest if a skater came with a costume that I questioned. What no, I you? said if the parents <laughs> came, not if the skater came. Oh, the parents, came. that's the one. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, go ahead. Okay, so what happens if the skater comes to you with a music choice that you think may not be judge friendly? Mm, yeah, that's a tough one. Mm. And, well, I mean, I would do the same thing. I would say it all depends what you want. I mean, you've got options here. You can pick the music that that you focus on the enjoyment for the audience pick music that you focus on that just you just love or pick music that just that you think that the judges would love it's certain certain generation obviously um, or not even love I would say pick music that they wouldn't hate let's put it that way they wouldn't yeah. you know um, so you know what do you want to do here if you want to just skate for yourself then you know if you're not getting those PC scores because the composition is not you know matching the, the the music or the character or whatever um, then you know what do you, you you've got to live with this decision that you're making so I think honestly mm. as you said is the best policy but you need to bring it to them that it could be a concern now not that the choice of music should or the judges have never been taught that that the music choice means anything it doesn't it can have the most abstract and weird piece of music but if it's incredibly well done you have to give yeah. the reward to it and I've seen that pieces of them going wow that's kind of kind of quirky you know but beautifully done and it was rewarded so you know I think I'm not sure that's as relevant as it used to be in the old days yeah. but um, yeah I didn't really answer your question but <laughs> whatever. But, uh, well whatever you came out with I think I would have said the similar so if we're both either that means that we're both just fumble around avoiding a definitive or we're on the same page it's, well it's difficult because you know you're dealing with parents, with coaches, with judges, with a lot of opinions, and everybody's going to have their own opinion, what they like, what they don't like, but in the end of the day, it's what you're going to be able to present at the moment you need it. 
And, um, yeah, so that's not an easy choice. And sometimes I've seen programs and music selection and dresses or costumes or whatever, and I'm going, oh, man, the beginning of the season, I'm going, I don't know about this, right? But I don't say anything. By the end of the season, I'm going, whoa, was I ever off base? Now I get it. Because it, took a, it yeah. took a season to develop it, right? So you really have to trust in the vision of the choreographer and, mm. and, and uh, you know, the costume maker. And yeah, giving it time to breathe in a ball. Yep. Yeah. That's it? That was easy. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just powered through that question. I'm going to have to think of harder ones. Yeah. I don't know. That was a quite hard one. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you know. Yeah. Open the forum to the viewers to pose us with some tricky questions. We can almost choose to pretend we haven't seen them if we think yeah. they're too difficult. Yeah, exactly. If they're too <laughs> tricky, you won't be hearing them, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, here's one more skater that perhaps is a threat for mm. top positions. We'll see. Nice connection with the coach and yeah. smile on the face and just sort of relax and not stressed out. This 15-year-old Yumi Shibayama of Japan takes to the ice. Second Junior Grand Prix season, second event this season. Coming sixth in Linz, also Japanese Nationals, fifth in Junior and tenth in Senior as these skaters will compete in both categories at their Nationals. 67.09 personal best, 53.63 is the season's best. Want to beat that right now, skating to Dance Macabre. Say so. Well then, what a fascinating contrast to me for the two Japanese skaters performing here, both training in the same rink. But Ayumi Shibayama, the 15-year-old born in Hyogo, seeming to really elevate her performance here in comparison to her performance in Linz. Yeah, no question. I thought that there was more 
mm, connection with the music. More passion, really, in the performance. The triple flip gets the leg back. Triple toe loop. And that was not reviewed at all. And it's clean in the system. No. There's a double axle. And triple lutz comes down. And this is given a clean. Wow. Yeah. All quarter. Comes into the quarter. Okay. And here's some great movements in here I did for you. <laughs> and no. do you think it interesting to here you can see the dance macabre, the dance of the dead, and our commitment to that here just seemed much more engaged than Lintz and yet Haruna Murakami, who we saw earlier, seemed to have the flip, but a less driven performance. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see the comparison to yeah, PCS. I would agree with you totally on that. This is more, I don't know, I don't want to say passionate, but mm, yeah. more connected, I suppose. Mm. to the music and, 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 uh, yeah and, and it's interesting with Murakami she came in with a medal already so maybe she had something to lose as opposed to Ayumi who comes in with a sixth place in her first assignment so maybe she has nothing to lose everything to gain so maybe that's just a guess as to perhaps you know I'm sure the skaters both wanted the very best but certainly something happened to make Shibayama really attack and testament to her love for the sport. This is a skater. You know, we talk about how it takes over their life. Ayumi's dog is called Axel. Oh, wow. I wonder if he can do an Axel. Well, that would be really impressive. Maybe a TikTok video of some sort there. Yeah. Sure, program score for Ayumi Shibayama, season's best, 61.65. Big smile on her face. That'll put her in second place, but crowded in that area. As yeah. you can see, very, very tight. It's going to be so exciting, the free program, of which I'm doing by myself. You won't even be watching this. It's too bad for you. <laughs> Nina Kusak is our next skater from Croatia. And she'll skate to the greatest showman.
And the reaction to the finished position from Lina Kusak, the Croatian skater born in Zagreb, suggests that the skater is very happy with the performance. And I think, Ted, based on what I can see, that likely to be the first time that Lina has landed triple flip in competition. So another notch on the success rate for the 15-year-old. Yeah, it's so nice to see the, some of these skaters end their program with a big smile on their face, not because they wanting to please the audience, but because they're proud of what they've done. And there's that triple flip into the double toe loop. Even with the hand going down, double lutz, nice and straight in the air. Lots of time coming out. Nice three turns and change of edge. And here's some brackets stepping up into the double axle. Rides off the end of the edge nicely. Maybe a little under on that. Salvaged. <laughs> yeah, hang on. A nice side position with the free leg and pulls that back up into camel or a change of foot. Level three. Final spin. And Lena had three weeks in Brazenon in Italy and then a week in Belgium on the Yorick Hendricks boot camp. But interestingly, she thanks her parents for all the driving and support. And, you know, not all the skaters appreciate the commitment from the parents, but Lena making very clear the gratitude that she has to her parents and I'm sure to her coach as well. You know, I think... I think I might reword that. I think a lot of them do appreciate it. They just don't. They don't think to thank them as often yeah. as maybe they could. I think they don't know. You know, at a certain time in life, you discover things that you were taught or told when you're younger. You go, yeah, yeah. You don't even really listen. Then later on, you go, my gosh, should they ever do a lot, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. some appreciate it immediately. They see the sacrifices. Some appreciate it and don't know what to say or don't think to say anything. And then some may not know until much later in life. Hard when to know. they become parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Did you always appreciate and see? As per the music from Lena, never enough. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 41.68 for Lena Kuzak. For Croatia, that's 20th in the short program. Well played. Very well played, Mark. <laughs> Our next competitor comes from Peru, Sarami Tanaka, 16 years old. 34.50 personal best back in 2021 in Courchevel. Coached by Yuko Mono. She'll skate the dance of the nights from Romeo and Julia.
So Rami Tanaka, a skater from Peru and a skater who fractured her foot last year and great to see her competing here, taking a moment to take her brow and celebrate performing in the fifth stop at the Junior Grand Prix. Yeah, and you're so right in so many cases, Mark, just the celebration of each individual athlete from wherever they come from or wherever they're born or whatever level they're at, there's the double axle. Just the celebration of participation for many is the game, is the top of it. You can see a downgrade there, not all the way around at all. And double Lutz gets that done. And we'll spend here, change combination spin. There's the change of edge. That's a feature. So one of the difficult features, another feature there, difficult variation, and comes in the level three. Oh, just missing. I think the rotations on the final feature there for the four. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, what isn't that amazing? We're getting the chance to see there what this means. There's a moment. Captured on the phone yep. to celebrate and commemorate. Great so picture. Well done, Cerami. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. You know, it'd be fun. We never have enough time, of course, to speak to every skater, but it would be fun to speak to these skaters and say, okay, tell us about this journey, you know, getting to this mm -hmm. point, you know, because everyone has their story. They all do. I mean, we're talking about the kids that don't have the skates here, and we've got another yeah. skater coming up, Natalie Langer Bauer from Estonia. But um, every skater has their story and their journey, whether they're, you know, someone was an architect and someone, you know, yeah. is heavily into, uh, you know, piano or whatever the case may be. But they also, skating is the common denominator here. And mm -hmm. so I always find it fascinating. And I always love learning about people's talents. You've got people who are extremely talented musicians that were brought up on piano or violin who are also skaters, but they never talk about their musicianship, if they will. They just talk about their skating. And so it's so much fun to discover uh, the other talents that some of our skaters have, not only in our country. We've done that in our country with a special contest, but I'd love to see that worldwide. Yeah. And even I want to know the significance of the Dumbo Cuddly Toy. I want yeah, to know all. <laughs> there you go. There's your talent. 28.82 <laughs> for Sarabi Tanaka, Peru. And that'll put her currently into 30 seconds place. A beautiful smile and a moment of enjoyment to be here. Our next uh, competitor represents Turkey. Turkeya, 17-year-old Zinep Naz Dogan. And she'll skate the sound of Dubuka.
Zineb Nazdogan from Turkey. And Ted, obviously we've had a bit more of an insight into the Turkish skating scene having had the Junior Grand Prix held in Istanbul. But what excites me more is to know that Zineb, who we've just seen, was 15 at Junior Nationals in Turkey. Uh, and so that's great to know then that she is demonstrating what a deep field there is. There must be so many more competitors in Turkey than I had previously assumed. So Yeah, exactly. So the double axe is under rotated. There's a triple Saka. Watch for the landing. This is forward. That'll be downgraded. Do a combo. So some work on rotational positions needed to speed up the rotation, get a little higher, and get all the way around. We saw some nice movements here with the shoulders and no, detailing cool. head movement as well. And the music choice, Ted, the sound of Dorbuka, that to me suggests as we look at the lutes, we saw similar, now I'm not an uh, educated person on the Turkish music scene, but this is similar to something we saw from the men's competitor in the junior men's event in Istanbul. And again, I sense that pride that, you know, just, but I think it's getting to ethnic music of her home country and proudly flying the, the Turkish flag as a skater and you know, it's exciting times for that federation. Yeah, it really is and, and for the community because we saw the enthusiasm everybody brought to the stands yeah. in Istanbul. It was pretty crazy there and and yeah. uh, that only helps you know, set a target that they want to get skates in the Junior Grand Prix, get somebody in the perhaps the Senior Grand Prix or the Championship at some point, you know, those types of things. Working hard, they have facilities They've got the coaches and you know doing a good job. That'll just take time, patience, and leadership. You talked about that. Whether it's a federation or a club, you need good leadership of the vision. And you have to stick to that. And again, as we saw in Istanbul, different coaches, so therefore there's that hopefully very positive impact of competition. Multiple numbers all striving, pushing each other forward to achieve better. Yes, let's take a look at the short program score. 32.90 for Zenep Naz Dogan from Turkey. That's 31st in the short program with two skaters to come. Now, folks, take note that our next skater was one of those skaters that lost their skates in the transportation, in the travel here. So she's skating on a brand new pair of skates. This is hard to do in practice, let alone competition. Another skater here, yeah. 19 years old, second junior Grand Prix se season, second event, 10th in Istanbul. So this is quite something. It's a challenge. 56 years, 56 points, personal best, 49.29, the season's best skating on new skates. To Love on the Brain by Rihanna.
Wow, like Ida Karunen from Finland. Natalie Langerberg, 18 year old from Estonia, showcasing that resilience. And you can see even you know, her skates, they're pristinely white, just out the box, and yet she can do triple flip, double toe, and true. Oh, yeah, it was yeah, triple flip, double toe. Quite a remarkable. And also the step sequence, she didn't bobble at all. Like she kept. That was an amazing one. The, the the jumps, yeah, it was incredible, but they're very quick. So you're only executing that in a matter of less than a second. But the step sequence, you see that triple flip a little bit under rotated, perhaps. We'll see, or the triple lats is on the quarter. Here, the detail, the deep, deep edges when the boot is very stiff, hard to bend in the ankles. You can see that right foot not even bending at all. You have to get that right, you have to get the right amount of lean on that just to secure yes. it. And, and actually the, the boot, the boot not being able to work across the boot, not so much perpendicularly, but across the blade. Ooh. Yeah. She adjusted her body position in many of those situations just to make the element work. She had to do an extra little pull, extra little knee bend, or whatever the situation was, just to get herself in position. And just instinctive. We yeah, and we should acknowledge for Natalie that not the dress that she would have worn either. You know, the, and for the for the, all the skaters, the dress is an important part for the athletes. But I mean, Natalie would look fantastic in anything. So we look forward to seeing her reunited with dress and, and boots. maybe suits. and boots. <laughs> Quite remarkable. Four skaters in the same situation. Three of three of them were able to compete and do you know pretty well. And what I found fascinating with Natalie after Istanbul, she had pictures taken and she shared with her followers of pictures with the Korean and the Japanese skaters. So showing some semblance of reverence and appreciation to the skaters that are stronger than her. And I'm sure linked into that is the aspiration to learn from them. So she wouldn't have lost the opportunity to be here with skates or not to learn from those others. Absolutely. So we take a look at the short program scores for Natalie. 47.87, that'll put Natalie currently into 16th place, place with one skater to come. And there is a look at your top three. And there's a bunch behind there that all of the 60s mm -hmm. and 59, 58. Lots can happen, probably will, in the free program. Our final skater of the day We're from Romania. Anna Stratulet, 14 years old, first junior Grand Prix season.
Well, the final competitor, Anna Stratulat from Romania. It's her first year as a junior. This is her first international competition, and she's had to wait till oh my like 10.30 in the evening. She's probably wondering, is this what this is all about? I don't like this. I have to wait all day long. Yeah, what an experience. Pretty good job and missed that lot. There's the double axle at the top yeah. of the program all the way around, no problem. Some nice arm movements. Here is a look at the triple sock out, too far back and not all the way around. Has to take the fall on that. And here's some of the steps. With that beautiful arch in the back there. Nice. And some nice work. The steps in at a level two. And then here, just rushing that pick right off the bat. And didn't get up into the air to turn. Flying Sitzman right at the end. That is in a level three, so missing one feature on that last element of the program. And there you go. And, you know, interesting, her coach had explained that she recognizes Anna has a wonderfully sensitive nature and she was hoping she could channel the emotion of the performance. What, you know, an amount of emotions to go through for any human, first international, you know, first year junior, having to wait to the end of 38 competitors. So, so much will have been amassed and experienced, consciously or not, she will be so much more prepared now for the free skate. Oh yeah, no, the experience is everything. It's just, you know, the skill up to that point, I don't want to say it doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter that you bring some skill into this, but the application of that skill in a competitive environment is completely new. And until you mm. sort of face that, you have a new learning curve. And so whatever it is, yeah. good or bad, you would be learning something. Because when you go to competition, why have a competition that wasn't different and test your nerves and your, you know, your courage and all of that. Mental fortitude. Yeah. It's like why the big games and big sports, they have a league for a whole season, but when it comes down to the championship game, that's a different kettle of fish. Mm. The short program scores for Anna. 28.75. And that will put Anna currently into 35th position. She was expecting and maybe hoping a little bit more. And she'll take a look at the report card and see where lose some of the points. And begin to rebuild as we take a look. At the final standings in the women's short program. It's been a long day of competition. 38 women. There it is. Jia Shin, Ayumi, Shibiyama, and Anna Pazetta. And we talked about, I talked about in the opening, would there be an upset of the Korean yeah. and Japanese domination? Well, it's not yet, but we do have someone in the top three other than a Korean or Japanese, and we'll see whether that is maintained throughout the free program. Any closing comments of this day, Mark? Uh, thank you, Ted, for keeping <laughs> us engaged and entertained. And yeah, tomorrow, everybody watching, send us some questions. Fuel us. With yeah, because otherwise, I'm going to have to come up with a bunch more. I'm going to see if I can stump <laughs> you there. Now that completes our coverage of day one here on week number five of the Junior Grand Prix. For all of us here at the ISU, for Mark Hanready, and I'm Ted Barton. Thank you for watching. We hope you'll join us tomorrow for the Rhythm Dance, the Paris Free, and the Men's Free. Good night, everyone. <laughs>